Welcome back, guys, to yet another episode here on the O'Shea Vlogcast channel. I am your host, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Now, you're probably wondering who that uh, high yellow guy is over there with the <laughs> beard and everything like that. And before we introduce him, because uh, he is known to many of us and uh, that are affiliated with NegroManosphere.com or what is known as the Black Manosphere, uh, before we introduce him, guys, come in the room and, and like the videos. And for those of you who are watching the replay, do the same. Uh, not only is this guy uh, an excellent podcaster, he's no longer on YouTube, unfortunately, but we do have some good news. We have him here for an hour today, and he will be going to the 21 convention. He will be the uh second african american of all time to go to 21 convention last year we had uh alan roger curry now there's another guy who's a boxer what's his name again ed Lattimore. ed Lattimore will be yeah, going ed so, Lattimore, yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm here to report that two of our guys on negromaster.com will be uh, uh two first african americans to ever speak at the uh the highly uh 21 convention and then this guy uh will present to some present to others or introduce to others none other than donovan sharp so welcome back, Donovan. We missed you over here in Negro Suit, brother. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's good to be here. Um, <clears throat> I'm certainly uh, just like you said. It um, I've been kicked off YouTube, and you. I mean, you and I were just discussing this, um, you know, off the air. Um, it's it's you know it's 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 been a blessing in disguise, so to speak. I'm I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, thank God I got kicked off YouTube. I'm not going to sit here and say that, hey, you know, I wanted to be kicked off YouTube. I don't. I'm not going to sit here and. I'm not going to sit here and, and fake the funk and say, yeah, you know, um, you know, I wanted to be kicked off YouTube or, or blah, 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 blah. But but by the same token, uh, we as men, we have the um, we have an incredible we have an incredible ability to sort of rise from the ashes uh, when we get knocked down. We're men. We find ways. We find ways around things like this. We we find a way we find ways to move on. So. So, yeah, you know, it it, it certainly sucks that I got kicked off YouTube, but in the long run, I think it's certainly going to prove to be far more advantageous uh, for me and my brand. And, uh, and now the only place, the only place to get my content is now donovansharp.com. Uh, before you could find me everywhere. You could find me on SoundCloud, YouTube, um, you know, Vimeo, whatever the case may be, but I've been kicked off all of those I've been not, not. I wasn't kicked off SoundCloud, but I got warned on SoundCloud a couple of times. So now I'm only posting previews there. But the um, the, uh, the the bottom line is is that the only place people can find my content is on my website, which is DonovanSharp.com. So so for all of you guys wanting to know, hey, are, is Donovan still doing his daily live show? Yeah, um, I've moved my daily live show to one o'clock Eastern, uh, one o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's in the middle of the day, 10 a.m. on the uh, on the West Coast. But yeah, DonovanSharp.com is where you guys can find my content. I'm um, listen. I'm still doing YouTube. I'm still do. Or I'm, I'm sorry. I'm still doing my daily show. I've still got my Patreon page. So the train keeps going. Train keeps moving. All right. Now, am I echoing, guys, a little bit? Um, am I you echoing? Sound fine to me. Nope. You sound fine to me. Sound fine to you guys. So let me know if I'm echoing. So good to guys have you there. Shout out to everybody here. Um, now, Donovan, when we're getting into the show here, uh, this is a topic that we were going to use on. Um, the podcast that we're called the, the, the hall of game. Uh, now obviously it's been a little bit slow taking off, but we will get guys organized and getting back on it. Hopefully by next week. And hopefully you'll still be with us for the brother pill season Absolutely. two. Absolutely. But you know, we want to talk about this particular subject matter that has been debated between uh, some great dating coaches. Uh, your, your, your uh, uh, friend and kind of, I guess, elder in, in, in a dating strategy world, which would be Alan Roger Curry. Um, he vehemently disagrees uh, with the position that you're going to take about uh, giving women or taking numbers uh, from women. I've heard, you know, Steve the Dean talk about this also to take a different position. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. I'm more uh, alongside of yours, which is taking her phone number. But l let's talk about both both sides of, of the coin. Um, why have you taken your position about taking a woman's phone number versus giving her yours? Yeah, the and just so just so I make it clear um, to uh, to everyone um, what what my position is is what we teach. <clears throat> pardon me, what we teach in the Negro Manosphere, what we teach in the Red Pill, the Brother Pill, what have you, is you know obviously you want to be you want to be you want to be better with women, right? Most people find the Red Pill or the Brother Pill for one of two main reasons: it's either sexual frustration or it's because of heartbreak. 
So you come here basically to become better with women. Well, somewhere along the way, you figure out, wait a minute, living the red pill life, as far as living the red pill life is concerned, when you become be becoming better with women, having having beautiful women at your beck and call, that is merely a side effect of living the red pill lifestyle. And no one ever people lose money all the time chasing women, but no one ever lost money chase or no one ever lost. I'm, I'm sorry. No one you'll lose money chasing women, but no one ever lost women chasing money. So the red pill lifestyle goes along with that with, with that mindset. Don't make women your top priority and women and, and women will make you their top priority. That being said, mm -hmm. the where we where we want to where we want to be in life, there are many different paths to 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 to, to success. Not every business owner is going to take the same path. They all come from different walks of life. They use different strategies, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the I guess one of the one of the more polarizing paths or, or paths, plural, that, you know, that we in the, that we in the red pill, the Negro Manosphere, the, the Negro Manosphere, the brother pill, um, disagree on fundamentally doesn't mean that we think, you know, that one way or the other is wrong is whether you should take her number or whether she, or whether you should take her number, whether you should give her yours. So I want to be clear that Steve, the Dean and Alan Roger Curry, their success, their success with women is well documented just because, just because they use a different strategy than mine doesn't make them, doesn't make either one of us right or wrong. It just, means we took a different path to get there now as far as i'm concerned i have never or i used to give girls my phone number but the reason why the reason why i started giving the, the reason why i started getting their phone numbers is because it puts me in control when you give a woman your phone number you're putting you're putting her in control mm -hmm. of the interaction she gets to decide when she wants to text you, she gets to decide if she wants to continue or even start the interaction. Mm -hmm. And when when you when you relinquish that control, you in essence become a little less attractive. Now, within the context of the sexual marketplace, we all know in the red pill here that that most women are the choosers and most women are chosen. Now, obviously, there are many exceptions to the rule because we all know that women have far more opportunities to have sex with men than men to have sex with women. Yeah. But women have the ratio advantages as far as the concept of natural selection is concerned. Mm -hmm. And really think about it, guys, in, in your own lives. When you go to the club, guys, there are almost always more available dudes than available chicks. This makes females the choosers and males the chosen. The, the same thing happens at a bar. For every one girl who's there looking for dick, there's three or four guys looking for pussy. When you give your girl your phone number after a conversation, like I said, you are giving her the control. You, She decides when to text or call you. She decides whether the interaction continues. She decides whether or not to ghost on you or whether or not to play games with you. Now, as much fun as girls think this is, it's not really what they want. Um, they might think it's what they want, but it's not what they need in terms of staying attracted to the man that they just had a conversation with. Women are neither attracted to, nor do they respect a man who is not a control. If she is the one taking charge, if she's the one in charge of making all of the decisions, she is not relaxed. And at, listen, any man with trace or uh, trace amounts of brother pill awareness knows that if a woman is not relaxed, she is not going to fuck you. This is why, by, by the way, believe it or not, mm -hmm. this is why relationships that are led by women are almost always destined to fail because it's just not the natural state of things. Women who are led and listen to this very clearly, guys, women who are led by men are almost always relaxed and happy because they can be the feminine women that they were designed to be. They can be kind. They can be attentive. They can be. They can. They can be sexually available at all times because her man is the one in control. No matter what women say, guys, they don't want to be in control of anything. They want all the accolades and all of the on all of the awards of being the strong, independent woman, but they don't want the responsibility. So if she has your number, okay, she is in control, and that is not what she wants. Further, women don't want to be the choosers, guys. They want to be the chosen. Okay, and again, think about this. This is why women don't propose to men for marriage, okay? In her mind, she thinks, okay, I proposed to him and he said yes, but did he say yes because he loves me or because I asked him? It's the same concept with phone number, guys. She Listen, she has your phone number, sure, but when she texts you, okay, and you text back, she's going to think, is he texting me because he likes me or because I texted him and he's just being polite? Uh, uh, listen, a girl wants to know you chose her. 
She wants to know that you texted her because you are romantically interested in her. If you're the one pushing the interaction forward and proactively showing interest, she never doubts your attraction to her. Yeah. Giving her control by giving her your number from the onset, guys, it sets a bad precedent. But getting her number sets the tone for the relationship. That tone being, I am in control and I am the leader, which is what girls want. Okay, let me let me do this. And shout out to Wake the Hell Up. Uh, he drops a $2 super chat. Let me go ahead and read this real quick. I'd rather give the chick my number and not hers. Uh, that's what he says. So let me, let's kind of do this because you paint a picture uh, very well written as, as always, like you're mm -hmm. really, really mm -hmm. excellent writer. But let me kind of read an excerpt of the situation in which you, you, you paint so eloquently um, to, to kind of visualize the situation. Okay. So you talk about, um, you know, your, your, uh, you know, one of your buddies, uh, is you know saying hey let's go out you know my wife's not fucking me you go to a club uh, you see this nice uh, you know looking hot you know let's say hot brunette or for a brother who are like the black women nice nice uh, you know braids or whatever however sure. she has her hair uh, sizable tits you know big butt whatever you like you, you see your type um, and then you know there's the eye contact that's coming so obviously there's some interest you can feel it there's some non communicable uh, language being expressed through uh, through through the posture and through the through the visual visual uh, you know acuity between the two of you. So of uh, you know your 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 buddy's ready to go and 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 you're put in situation of should I give her uh, my number or take hers? Now here's what some guys are going to say on the rebuttal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've heard this. Hey, if I take her phone number, even though this woman like in the club like oh my god she's acting like she's in love she's acting like she's really feeling me. She's giving me attention, you know. Um, you know, women are, are kind of moody. The next day, I'm trying to hit her up, no response. I, I try to send a text message. She takes four or five hours to reply. So, you know, instead of me getting my hopes up, then you know, if she's really interested in me, let me sow the seed, and then you know, she'll get to me if she's interested in me. Okay. And it's and 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 and, and also. For her, it's a mind fuck because most guys ask for the number and not give them the number. So because you're mm -hmm. doing that, it's it's totally different than the other approach, and it makes you stand out because it is unique. Okay, yeah, those are th those are both those are both very good cases. But yeah. to that, I would say this right: the reason why and guys ask for. Let me ask you this. Let me just let me just paint a picture like this. Sure. How what percentage of women will take a number from a man that offers offers her his phone number? So if if 100 men say, hey, here's my number to 100 girls, what percentage of girls actually take that phone number? Just about all of them, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what are they going to do? Say no, right? Do you under I mean, does that make sense to you? Do you understand what yeah. I'm saying? Like, l listen, whether she's interested or not, she's going to take your number. Right. So right. so when you give a girl your any any man can give a girl his phone number. OK. Um, how can I put this? Um, um, hmm, you, the, uh, my, my mind is really working right now. Yeah, the point is this. The, the point is this is giving a girl your phone number does not it, it, to, it, listen. It does not make you stand out from other guys for this very reason. Right. It's very easy to give a girl your phone number. There's okay. no upfront rejection. OK, and okay. because there's no up, there's no up, there's no risk for upfront rejection or less of a risk for upfront rejection. It makes that task easy. Girls want men who are bold. Girls want men who want to put their balls on the line and go for broke in the, you know, on the on the chance that he could be rejected. So okay. let me ask you another question. What which is more impressive to you? A guy who comes to you and says, yeah, well, she, I gave my number to 100 different girls today. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is more impressive, a guy who gives a girl 100 numbers or a guy who says, you know what? I got 15 phone numbers from girls. Which is the more impressive feat? This, the latter, to me, is more impressive. Of, of course, because he put, he, put his ball, he put his balls on the line, right? You're far more likely to get rejected if you ask for a girl's phone number than if you give her yours. OK, so by giving a girl her your phone number, you're not showing any intestinal fortitude. You're not showing any balls. You're not making yourself more attractive. You're doing what every other guy out there is doing. Listen, the reason why the reason why black women have a bunch of niggas babies is because it's easy for her to be a hoe. Right. Like, listen, being being a slut is easy. Being a stud is not. This is why being a stud is revered and being a slut is admonished. Right. So if by, by giving a girl your phone number, you're bypassing all of that upfront rejection. You are. Listen, 
uh, uh, listen, nothing against your guy who donated the $2 super chat, but let's keep it real here. Wake, uh, you know, uh, wake the hell up. The reason why you would rather give a chick your phone number and not ask for hers is because you're afraid of rejection. That's not abnormal because we all have approach and rejection and anxiety. But women will, women will respect you far more if you put your balls on the line and mm -hmm. ask for her phone number because she knows she doesn't have to give you her phone number. She knows because she knows that she is far more likely to take your phone number than for than for her to give you to give you hers. And here's another thing. Uh, um, one thing that guys like to say, well, if I give her, her, if I give her my phone number, I'll know she's interested if she texts me guys, you're listen, we're men. We are supposed to be proactive. I'm not waiting around for a woman to choose me. I'm going to choose her. You understand what I'm saying? So it, it, I, I, it, it makes sense. And I've heard Steve, the Dean talk about this before. Listen, if you get, basically it's the machine gun approach, which isn't bad, but it it again it it bypasses that visceral it bypasses that visceral reaction uh in terms of yeah you know i got her phone number oh look she texted me 3 days later and now i know she's interested guys that listen that's cowardly um sitting around waiting for a bunch of girls to text you back that's not that's listen that's not impressive and girls know this okay when a girl texts you back if you give if you give 100 girls your phone number the ones here's the thing you give 100 girls your phone number one weekend, O'Shea, guess what? When when any girl who texts you, who has your number because you gave it to her, is only texting you, she's texting you last. You are not her first choice. She was mm -hmm. bored on a Sunday afternoon, okay? But you want to know who she is texting? The guy she gave her phone number to. The guy who had the balls to say, hey, you know what, Tanisha? You seem fun. I'm going to the XYZ bar on, you know, next Monday or mm -hmm. whatever day you choose. Here, put your phone number in. We'll hang out sometime. That's the guy she's texting. OK, mm -hmm. and the reason why she's more impressed with that guy is because he is doing what is harder. Being a stud is hard. Being a slut is easy. Giving a woman your phone number is easy. Asking a woman for her phone number is very, very difficult. OK, hear me. Let me just do this, guys. And shout out to uh, see. I see brother David Willis in the chat uh, out of Atlanta. It's good to see him, man. He's uh, getting ready to graduate. If he hasn't graduated already. So I want to congratulate him on his academic success. He's a moderator here. So shout out to this brother. Do me a favor, brother. We have 116 people watching right now. Um, we only got an hour with Donovan, so he doesn't come on YouTube anymore. But do me a favor. Would you be so kind to like the video? This is a you know, very, very good video that we're doing. So at least go ahead and like the video so that we can get some participation going on on the video right now. If you're really enjoying the content, like the video. Um, here's also my problem with um, with the, the aforementioned position that the other guys have um, is when you when you meet a woman, especially let's say for example, if you were to you know stop her in 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 in, in the approach code approaching, mm -hmm. um, how many times do women get approached a day? Uh, and, and 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 that's one thing that I gotta you know uh, gotta 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 mention. And also, what type of impression would you have to l leave on a woman for her to take your number and then message you? You know, like, so I think it'd be a combination of for this to be successful, you would need to be super attractive to her. You would mm -hmm. need to stand out personality wise. Mm -hmm. You would mm -hmm. need to do. There are so many things that you would need to do. Now, I'm not saying that the other because uh, the other argument that I can hear is some guys say, well, she can give you her number and not get, not be interested in you. Also, I've had that. Right. happen. We all. No, no, no. But listen, listen. We've all we all have had that happen. Right. right. Listen, gr listen, girls give their numbers all the time. And a lot of people think, "Ooh, I got their number. OK, that's more impressive than giving a girl your phone number. But that doesn't guarantee you shit. Dude, I've gotten hundreds of phone numbers from hundreds of girls who I ended up not fucking or they just ended up ghosting on me. So getting the phone number that is that's just the beginning. But getting your, but getting her phone number that is more impressive to the girl than actually giving your phone number. But 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 continue, keep going. Okay, so um, now let me let me also so mention this. The uh, also, it, it, what type of wild approach would you need to make to make to stand out in this woman's mind? Obviously, mm -hmm. she's attractive. She gets approached multiple times mm -hmm. per day. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you would need to be a combination of many things, somewhat attractive to her, somewhat tall, I would think, um, very charismatic, very funny. And then what's the amount of time that you have to give her your number to even know if there's chemistry? Is it a three minute conversation? Is it a five minute conversation? Did you, did you talk to her? And then she agreed to go to coffee with you out of mm -hmm. the blue conversation. Like mm -hmm. it would depend on all of these variables. 
for it to actually be successful or at least increasing the likelihood that she would contact you. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's I'm something I think yeah. that's something that I think that the, the, the guys um, and Alan Roger Curry, shout out to him. He'll, he'll be on uh, next next week sometime off of vacation. But that's something I want him to address. How, what is your impression with this woman that you're leaving? And, you know, and how do you know that she's uh, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? I understand. But here's the thing. OK, now I hear myself echoing. OK, let me, see. Let me uh, mute my. OK, now I can't. OK. All right. Cool. 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 Yeah. Here's the thing. What kind of impression? Um, what kind of impression are you are you leaving on a woman? Ask yourself this. Right. You say a woman gets approached all a woman gets approached all the time. OK. Answer me this question, O'Shea. Which do you think a woman gets more? Do, do you think she gets, do you, what, which happens more? Do you think she gets more phone numbers from men or do you think that she gives her phone numbers out to men? Which, which, which happens more? The latter. She gets more, she gives her phone number more. You think so? Wait, wait, say it again. Does she get more what? Does she get more numbers or does she give her phone number out more? Does he get more numbers? No, no, the woman, like a woman on any given day, a woman who gets dick thrown does at them all the time. Does she get more numbers she, or she gives more phone numbers out? I think- right. I think that a woman, if she's not interested, I've heard women say, you know what? Give me your number. I'll call you. I've heard that before all the time. Oh, right. Exactly. So I and would that, say that she's going she's gonna to probably give more rejections or take more numbers than she gives out. There you go. And when, a, and when a woman tells you, give me your phone number, I'll call you. You know what she is telling you, O'Shea? She's telling you, I'm not attracted to you. Absolutely. Okay? This is, listen, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. If she's not attractive, un, attracted enough to you, not to give listen a phone number listen she could block your phone number at any time right, right. but if she is a, if she is attracted enough to you she is going to take she's going to give you her phone number right like this is what happens but if she says well listen i'm not going to give up my phone number but i'll take yours what she is literally telling you she's trying to give you a soft no she doesn't yeah. want to hurt her feelings she doesn't want to hurt your feelings because your frame is not your frame and game isn't uh, probably isn't strong enough but 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 that is a rejection okay that and a lot of times that is a shit test right so mm -hmm. if a woman and i've listen i've had this happen to me before like i'll say i'll i'll say something like um um i'll say something like uh, you know you seem cool here put your number in my phone and we'll hang out and then she'll tell me well you know what i'll tell you what i don't i don't give up my phone number but but i will take yours and i'll tell them i'll just joke with them okay yeah sure it's five 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 one two one two and then I kind of look at him. I give him I give him a fake number. And then she kind of laughs and says, no, like, I really want your phone number. Or if she laughs and walks away, she wasn't interested anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you have to, you almost have to give her the impression that, listen, this is going to go one of two ways. I'm either going to get your I'm either going to get your phone number or this interaction is over. Because, again, if she does not give you her phone number and you don't ask her for her phone number, gentlemen, um, Dewan Trade says, I believe don't ask them for shit. No, you're not asking a girl for anything. Never ask a girl. Can I have your can I can I have your phone number? No. You say, listen, put your number in my phone like that's how it goes. OK, OK, OK. Um, let me kind of uh, go into some other things. Guys, get the likes up on the video. I really, really appreciate it. Um, let's talk about this whole idea of, uh, of of you're in control. OK, because it now here's the thing. I'm a person that doesn't like text messaging. I hate text messaging. Um, I think it's the, the worst thing that can. Um, so, so I, I kind of, so it's like, it goes, you get the number, then what, right? It's kind of like that strategy that a lot of guys have problems with. You get the phone number and what? Now, here's the thing that you said, when you're in control and girls like it, mm -hmm. here's the, here's the problem that I have maybe with this particular part. Once you send that text message, boom, you're no longer in control. Right. You understand? Right. And, and so here girls, they get like, you know, women, you know, in America, even if they are attracted to you, they, they, they tend to have um other guys who they have on the whatever pecking order or hierarchy and then once you send that text message um you know you get you start playing that one word response game oh we're responding back every hour two hours three hours and i think at this position you know alan roger curry and, and others they have a, a strong kind of point because here you go having to wait on a response and wait and see if you're doing a text messaging thing you know what i mean um what's your response to that because I don't use text messaging for the, for the most part. If I, don't, if I don't have to. I prefer to talk to somebody. Um, so what do you what do you what do you say about guys who have that position? 
Yeah, first of all, um, I don't really like texting either, but this is this is what girls do. OK, so we can talk about how we don't like the state of the sexual marketplace. We can talk about the fact that we have to treat girls like shit for them to get us to treat us well. But this listen, this is what it is. We're men. We adjust. We adapt, et cetera, et cetera. As far as once you send a girl that text message, you're in control. Guess what, O'Shea? When you give a woman your phone number, she is in control anyway. Right. So if you give a girl your if you give a girl, it, it, it's the same in both cases. You give a girl your phone number, you're you're waiting for her to to text or call you. When you get her number and you text her, what are you doing? You're waiting for her to call or text you. It's the same thing with one difference. You're doing what most men are have been unsuccessful doing, which is getting her phone number. Again, women get hundreds of phone numbers a month. They only give their phone number out to a certain amount of people and it's far less than the than than the amount of numbers that they actually get. OK, so again, when you give a woman your phone number and oh, my God, she texts me, she's interested, eh, maybe, but she's more interested in the guy that actually got her phone number. So, again, like you said, once you send that text, once you send that first text message, she is in control. Well, guess what? When you give a woman your phone number, she's in control for one, two, three days, six days, six weeks, whatever. She may never text you. Right. But at least if you have her phone number, you can start the interaction. And guess what? If you text a woman and she doesn't text back, guess what? She wasn't interested. Well, if I give my uh, giving her your giving her your number and she didn't text, guys, she isn't she wasn't interested anyway. The only reason why she took your phone number is because it was easy for her to do. Right. She can either not t text you, ghost on you, whatever the case may be. Right. Well, Donovan, if you give her, her if you give her your if, if you get her phone number and she and you text her and she doesn't text back, she wasn't interested anyway. It saves you a lot of wasted time. OK, OK, OK. So um, let me do this, guys. Get uh, uh, the likes up on the video, guys. Um, I want to go ahead and, uh, and do that. So we have 159 people watching, 81 people liking the video. Um, so I want to talk about the text messaging. Alan Roger Curry. Uh, I don't know who else said this, but I want to uh, make it clear. On July 17th, 2017, Alan Roger Curry writes on the Negro Manosphere, young black men need to cut back on electronic communication. OK. And uh, so for those people who think that maybe, uh, you know, hey, this is a position I heard from someone else. It, it could be it's the same. But I got to credit Alan Roger Curry for writing it, putting it on paper first in the year July uh, it's actually one of the better articles written on the Negro Monster, July 17, 2017. So he explains this very thoroughly. So if, mm -hmm. if the idea comes out from maybe, you know, someplace else, I'm not sure if they read this article or not. But if it sounds very, very similar to that, I got to give Alan Roger Curry the credit for creating this on paper first. Uh, so this whole idea about setting up calendars. And if you guys want to see that article, it's in the description. I put it in the description. Actually, I put it uh, in the chat. So there's no discrepancy about that because that definitely was written by Alan Roger Curry. Uh, on, on July 17, 2017, on com. So let me let me go to this. Um, let's talk about th this whole idea of uh, of women respecting boldness. Um, why do you say that? Well, here's the thing, and and boldness, and and actually, David Willis uh, made a really good comment. Let me just address this here. He says, in terms of texting, I agree with al alpha male strategies. The point of texting should be used as used as intended, as essentially. Blah, 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 blah. He's right. The only time that you should text a woman is for logistical reasons. Hey, meet me here. I'm on my way. Um, blah, 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 blah. That That's how that works. Texting is not for lengthy conversations. If you want to talk to a girl, either talk to her on the phone or talk to her when you are out on that date. Uh, so shout out to uh, to David Willis for uh, for pointing that out. Um, as far as boldness is concerned, and again, I, I alluded to this. Um, I alluded to this a little bit earlier. And again, this is this is exactly what I said earlier. If we're keeping it 100, guys, any man can give his phone number to phone number out to 100 women a day. OK. And again, a woman is far less likely to reject a man who gives her his phone number than the opposite. So, again, there's much less risk for a man getting a girl to give up her digits, guys. Now, that's the challenge. This is and guys hide behind this. Well, I don't want to ask her for shit. No, you're hiding behind that excuse. OK, you're hiding behind the fact that you are afraid of rejection. Perfectly natural. But you got to keep it 100. The reason why the reason why I don't want to ask the girl for the phone number is because I might get rejected. Guys, in the beginning, rejection fucking sucks. You've spent five, 10 minutes with the girl. And all of a sudden you find out that because she's not giving you her phone number, she wasn't attracted to you. 
I get it. But yeah, listen, you have to blunt force trauma. You got to go out and, uh, and approach as many girls as possible. You are going to get rejected. Dude, listen, if you if you ask 100 girls for their phone number, maybe 25 are going to give it to you. Expect those ratios. Now, women can take a man's number to be polite with absolutely zero intention of contacting him, okay? But if a man asks for a woman's phone number, she can simply reject him by telling him no. We know this. A man who gives a woman his phone number, okay, is taking the easy way out. And guess what, guys? Females know this. They know it's easy for a man to give her his phone number. Okay, sure. She, you know, listen, she could call him or text him later on if she's attracted enough to him. But unless he looks like, you know, uh, uh, you know, like the love child of Shamar Moore and Denzel Washington or Boris, I always forget the guy's <laughs> last name, or drives a Lamborghini, she probably won't. If you get out of a Lamborghini, listen, if you've got washboard abs and you look like a Shamar Moore ass nigga, right, with six figures and this and that and the other, and you're a 10 out of 10 on the look scale as far as women's concerned, you can drive down Las Vegas Boulevard, step out your Lamborghini and give your phone number to all kinds of girls. You give out 100, you give out 100, uh, uh, your phone number to 100 girls. Guess what? You're going to get a hundred fucking responses, but because we all don't look like Shamar Moore and we all don't drive Lamborghinis, these are the kinds of men that are giving their phone numbers to women. Okay. And part of the reason, part of the reason is that he didn't put his balls on the line and ask for her phone number. This is the reason she's probably not going to text back. Listen, guys, truly going for it with a woman by asking her for her phone number, guys, listen, this puts you ahead of 95% of the men out there who take the easy less risky approach of handing her his information. Girls respect boldness in men and respect is the single most important ingredient when it comes to sustained arousal and attraction. And again, I'll use this example again. I'm reading this actually right here from my, from my article. I ask you this, which is more impressive, O'Shea, a guy who gives his number to 74 women or a guy who gets 27 numbers from women, right? Like we know which is... Here's the thing, though. Alan Roger Curry is actually in the chat and wants to come on right now. Do it. Bring him on, man. Bring him on. Do, okay. it. do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> it's funny. Both of these guys have a uh, have um 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 um, um a client like very soon. Uh, Alan Roger Curry's in Miami right now, and Donovan. But I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll make a big big battle royal debate on the topic. I put up some money for the both of you guys, and we'll set it up and let you guys rumble. Let the fans decide on who won on my site. Or on the Negro Manosphere.com. I think it's fun, right? So we'll have like the Negro Manosphere uh, uh, Rumble Award. So, yeah, so Alan Roger Curry wants to jump in and, and challenge your position. This is bring him, in, bring him in, bring him in, bring him in. All right, so let's 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 do this. And again, that's why I'm glad if Alan Roger Curry heard me. And there's no disrespect to anybody. Um, I love Alpha Male Strategies, you know, he's a great coach, but um, I had to give Alpha Male uh, uh, Alan Roger Curry. Uh, the the first credit for that because he's the first person to actually put it on paper as far as calendar dates and stuff like that. I'm not saying that people don't, don't do it, but he wrote that article on NegroMinister.com. I had to give him credit where credit's due. Um, so so again, uh, he's the first person that I ever actually heard say that. We got so many super chats coming in. Let me read uh, read them, um, and, and we'll answer some of these real quick. So Alan Roger Curry, if you're in uh, the uh. Dude, it's like Alan Roger Curry, he will never come on when you want him to come on. <laughs> but if if he's like stalking the chat, he'll say, Come on. Yeah, bring uh, him on. And, right. and again, this is what this is what I was talking about at the beginning, sure. at the beginning of at the beginning of the show. Guys like listen, Alan Roger Curry, dude, Alan Roger Curry's probably fucked more girls than even me. I fucked a lot of girls. ARC's probably fucked more. But like I was saying before, and I'm not backing down off my position. Okay. I'm just acknowledging the fact that there's more than one way to skin a cat, guys. Okay. Like, like, just because we think differently about different things, like success, there are many different paths to success, okay? Right. And I think, it, and the strategy or the path that you take really has to align with your beliefs and well, not really your beliefs, it has to align with your personality. So the type of game advice that I give might not work for some people because you're just, you just aren't me. Like if you were to, like if O'Shea were to give me dating advice, I couldn't like there are some elements that would work, some not so much because that that just doesn't fit my personality. So again, I'm listen, I listen, I am 100%, you know, steadfast in in my convictions, okay. but I want you guys to understand that hey, listen, there's more than one way to skin a cat and you know, listen, you can decide which approach works better for you. All right. All right. No, I I um there he is. Oh hey, shit. Listen. ARC in the motherfucking oh, house. Look, hold on, I gotta use my oh, thing. He looks mad. Look, he looks <laughs> mad too. 
You look like nice to the Negroes <laughs> on NegroManosphere.com. You motherfuckers, man. Y'all have been treating me. You, Donovan, and Rom. It's like you are. I'm like the youngest dude in the crowd, and all you niggas treat me so bad, dog. I got to mark an a fucking appointment with Donovan. I got to get an appointment with Rom. Then I see Rom on people podcast and shit. Mm-hmm. Alan Roger Curry got to make an appointment with you. You on Edwards podcast. What the fuck is going on, man? This is some dark schism, colorism type of shit. <laughs> hey, wait, well, first, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we hear you loud Yeah, as yeah well. I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, I can hear you loud, loud and clear. Okay, because as you can tell by my background, I'm in Miami Beach, man. I'm I'm working with two one-on-one face-to-face clients here. Matter of fact, I got to work with one in about just under an hour. Um, so what you're saying is you're doing a threesome been, as we speak, right? Technically. We've been having uh, uh, severe thunderstorms down here, though. Okay. Um, anyway, it was just coincidental, man. It happens. And O'Shea should probably know this because I just happened. I was multitasking. And one of my regular habits is I'll check into YouTube to see what's popping on there, whether it's sports related, black manosphere related. And I remember O'Shea had actually asked me to participate. For- he wanted you and I, Donovan, to participate in this discussion because he knew we had, a, for the most part, opposing views. Yeah. And I think my schedule was busy at the time he wanted to do it. But when I saw the topic, I said, oh, shit, I oh, got to listen to what Donovan got to say. So anyway, here's my thing. I'll start out by saying, in respect to Donovan's stance, which I know is different from mine, I don't think asking for a woman's number is the like worst thing a man can do or the most ineffective thing a man could do. Actually, what I tell my clients, I always say that the first preference is to exchange numbers. Okay. Exchange numbers. That's always my first preference is to exchange numbers. But then I always say, if only one number can be given, my stance is give a woman your number. And here's why. I've talked to many women, like dozens, if not hundreds over the years. And I, I will bring this up about numbers because so many men will talk about how, yeah, man, this chick gave me a number. And then I ended up leaving like two or three voicemails. I never heard from her. So I'll ask women that I know or dealt with. I'll say, why are you, why do you give men your number if you're not interested? And the vast majority of the time, they'll just laugh and say, oh, Alan, come on. You don't know why? I say, why? They say that's a woman's way of quickly rejecting a man without rejecting them. We don't like to directly reject men and say to a man's face, no, you're not our type. No, we're not interested in you. So our easy, quick way is to say, oh, well, let you let me give you my number and give me a call and, you know, we'll see what happens. And they know when they're giving you their number that now, I'm not saying all women. Of course, you gonna have some women who are going to be interested that genuinely will give you their number because they're interested. But again, I've talked to dozens, if not hundreds of women that have told me as recently as just in the last few weeks that they say when I'm talking to a man that I know I'm not interested in and I can't find a polite way to end the conversation, I'll just say, hey, here's my number. Give me a call. We'll talk sometime. But they'll tell me, they'll say, I know as soon as I walk away from that guy that I'm never going to talk to that guy ever. Or but on the flip side, numbers. yeah, a lot of times they give them fake numbers. On the flip side, though, Almost everyone was said that if a man gives me their number and I call him, it's because I'm interested. Now, a lot of women won't call you if you they, so just because you give a woman your number, that doesn't automatically mean she's going to call you. But the women have concluded that if you do give me your number and I do call you now, here's my clip. Uh, also, I want to add on both fronts, whether you ask for a woman's number or give a woman your number, and particularly if you give a woman your number. Don't give women a compelling reason to want to talk to them. Like, you can't, like, if I went out right now and saw a fine woman and just said, hey, here, call me. <laughs> and I'm like, she's going to be like, for what? what? The fuck I'm going to call you for, right. To talk about what? Jet skiing? What the fuck I'm calling you for? Yeah. What I normally do is I tell women what my desires and interests are. Of course, that's more one. Like, for example, I talk to women and say, I lean into her and say, you know what, when we hook up, I'm going to fuck the shit out of 
out of you. And I know you want me to fuck the shit out of you. Here's my, I know you're going to call me when your pussy gets wet. And I'm constantly waiting for that. Call. Yeah, she's like, boom. She knows when she calls me what I'm trying to talk about. I ain't trying to talk about the last rerun of the Cosby show. She knows what she's talking about fucking. Or I, even if I don't go that X-rated, I'm going to let her know that I don't want to talk to her on the phone just for small talk. Because nothing, anybody who's listening, who's read my books, know that's my biggest thing I'm against is trivial, entertaining, small talk. And the worst thing you could do when you get on the phone, and this, again, is regardless of whether you gave her your number or you got the number from her, is like, call a woman and say, like, so, like, you know, what's going on? Like, hey, how you doing? Like, you know, so what's been happening? Like, you know, what's up? Bitch is going to be like, what the fuck is he talking about? You got to be provocative. You got to be provocative, fellas. So, yeah, I now to address something I did here, Donovan say he said, which is more impressive, giving a woman, a guy who gave a woman 50 numbers or, or getting a woman 27 numbers? I don't think, depending on, along the lines of what I just said, I don't think either one could be necessarily impressive. For example, if a guy tells me, hey, I got 25 numbers this past weekend, mm -hmm. I'm going to be like, so? <laughs> like, so what? Did she tell you when she gave you the number? Did she tell you she was gonna suck your dick? Did she tell y'all? Did she tell y'all was definitely fucking? And if they say no, I'm be like, so what? You got a number? She might have gave you a number because she wants to tell you about the new shoes she bought at the shopping mall the other day. That don't mean uh, shit. Male, male girlfriends. Yeah, hey, I mean you. You get on the phone talking about bullshit. That don't mean shit. And, and and same with if a guy gave a woman multiple numbers and say a good portion of them calling me, you end up talking about bullshit. So, yeah, I think that oh, these specific women I, on my Patreon page, I have these this series called Intimate Interviews, where I'm, I'm interviewing women and asking them different questions. And these two women I interviewed in San Francisco, we talked about this specific thing. I asked them. I said. About phone numbers. Do you prefer uh, a man give you the phone number? You get a woman? No, I think I asked him. When a woman, when a guy asks you for your phone number and say you give it to him, does that automatically mean you're interested or what? And they, they quickly start shaking their head. <laughs> they looked at each other. They was like, oh, hell no. And I said, well, then why would you give a, a guy your number if you know at the time you're giving him your number, you're not interested? And they brought up something that I would say, based on stories I've read in the media, is legitimate. These women, main thing was they said, Alan, nowadays, it's not safe, depending on the guy you're talking to, it's not safe to just reject the guy straightforwardly to his face. There are guys who will stab you because you rejected him. Mm, yeah. There's been stories that's... of women getting shot because they rejected a guy. I'm not about to tell a guy. No, I'm not attracted to you. Why are you asking for my number? You're not even close to my type. And all of a sudden, he's like, okay, bitch, yeah, why don't you take this knife in your stomach? Boom. So, <laughs> right. so a lot yeah, of these women are literally free of rejecting men. So th their, their response was, we, like I said earlier, they said we give guys, a lot of guys, our number as a safe way of blowing a guy off. All right, let me, okay. let me, let me uh, first of all, let me congratulate both of you guys. Um, both of you guys will be speaking at the 21 convention. Uh, this yes, October. I'm, I'm very proud of, of both of you guys for not only uh, your contributions outside of what is the black manosphere, because you guys are on the road before you came over here. But what you guys have done for the black manosphere since you've been involved in, in what is known as the black manosphere. We're just so proud of you guys. Uh, man, you've really turned this around as far as a lot of content creation on YouTube and for black men, as far as game. And we, we love you guys, man. We're just so proud of you guys. I'm going to send you guys down there with a little bit of, with a little bit of something. I can't tell you how much, but I want you to get, buy a prostitute. Well, you don't need it because you got game, but <laughs> we, all of I was going to say, don't give me, guys, put, don't give me pussy. Really, I can get pussy for free, bro. Give me the right, money. Right. But just in case you <laughs> <say> like me, <laughs> shit, wanna, you know, uh, but I, I really want to, you know, want to tell both of you guys, I were really proud of both of your contributions. Now it's your second time going, and this is your first time going Donovan and, you know, two out of the three first African-American speakers at 21 convention are affiliated with negromancer.com. It makes me yeah. so, so happy. I want to thank you guys again for, for your hard works. Uh, but Donovan, is there anything you want to respond to what he's saying? And I'm going to take a piss real quick. 
because um my bladder is okay. fucked up. But go ahead. Okay, yeah. First of all, yeah, uh, just off of what O'Shea just said, I think it's very important um for myself and Alan Roger Curry to to be involved in the 21 convention. It is like I can't tell you how important it is for 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 finally for black men to be not sort of breaking into the white mainstream manosphere but it's important it's important for people to know and understand that hey listen you know black men make up what six or seven percent of the population but we're out here getting you know 50 percent of the pussy so we obviously have something to offer in terms of <laughs> name and lifestyle and uh and, and life choices etc cetera, etc cetera. so so the fact that you know now it's three of us it's you myself and uh, and ed Lattimore, who by the way is a heavyweight fighter who happens to have a physics degree if that's not alpha fucks beta wow. bucks in its truest form i don't really know what is like he is the like honestly he's he's the unicorn now in terms of in terms of the whole uh, giving your phone number instead of uh, instead of asking for the phone number i think a lot of it largely depends upon your personality it, it depends upon your personality, what you're wearing, your game, et cetera, et cetera. And giving the apex example that I just gave, if you're if you're dressed to the nine, dude, if you look like Donovan Sharp and you're dressed to the nines and you're driving a Lamborghini, yeah, you can get out and machine gun your number to all kinds of girls. Chances are most of them are probably going to get back with you. And something else that you said uh, really struck a chord, uh, really struck a chord with me is that mm -hmm. if um, I think you said if, uh, women would give their phone numbers to men as a way of rejecting him. And I would say to you, you're absolutely right. But guess what? A man giving a phone number to a woman, he's rejecting. He's also rejecting himself He because he at that point, he'll say, OK, I'm going to go ahead and give her the phone number because and, and a lot of guys get. The, here's the thing. If if a conversation isn't going well, if he doesn't sense that attraction, He's not going to ask a woman for his phone number because he because he knows that she's not giving, I guess, what people are calling now choosing signals, right? Okay, obviously this girl's not feeling it, but you know what? Hell, what the hell? Maybe she's having an off day. Let me give her her phone number and see if she calls me back. Dude, nine times out of ten, she's probably not going to call you back because she wasn't attracted to you anyway. So by giving a woman your phone number, you are in essence, you're, you're, giving, you're giving her the way, oh, thank God, I didn't want to have to give him a fake number. So now, you know, he gave me his phone number. I'm never going to call him, et cetera, et cetera. Most women don't call, but here's the thing. If you give, if you take a woman's phone number and you call or text her, if she responds, then you know she's interested. You are the one taking, you are the one taking the initiative. And women like men who take the initiative. Yes. And and a lot of men, I guess, want to miss characters. Well, if if I give her, if I give her my phone number, that's I'm I'm showing her that I choose her. Okay, yes, okay, you're interested. But if you ask her, if, if you not ask her, but if you get her phone number, there's ways to do that. Don't ask you, you know, you give her, you give her instructions, I guess, as Tariq King Nasheed says. But by taking her phone number, you are also not only are you exhibiting a choosing signal, not only are you letting her know that you're attracted to her, you're letting her know that, hey, listen, I'm ballsy enough to ask you for your, to get your phone number from you. Even though you know you're afraid, even though you know, I know that you're afraid of, of rejecting guys because it often leads to danger and or death. I know that I'm putting my balls on the line here because you could reject me and humiliate me. Women respect boldness. Like uh, the, like the flying, uh, um, like uh, people who do the, uh, the tightrope, right? If somebody does a tightrope, if they walk across the tightrope and there's a net down, okay, if he makes it across now, yeah, okay, that's impressive. But if, there, but if there's no safety net, all right. That is all the more impressive. Women are far more attractive to men who operate without the safety of a safety net than men who do. Now, listen, an attractive guy may have that safety net. She might be attracted. Oh, I can't. I hope this dude gives me his phone number. Right. But it is more again, it is more impressive in the eyes of a woman because it shows boldness and women respect boldness. It could listen. It could go either way. But if you are if you're a weak guy, if you have no game, if you don't look good, if you're not confident, of course you're going to give her your phone number because you knew she was probably going to reject you anyway. At that point, giving her your phone number is a Hail Mary. And here's another thing. Um, if you're weak, that doesn't engender... If you're a weak man, right? If you're if you're the kind of guy who, who doesn't have game, was sort of timid, shy, blah, 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 women are definitely afraid to... They're definitely afraid to, to reject those guys because those are the guys shooting up schools. Those are the guys killing people over women. Right. So, of course, she's of course, she's not going to give him. Of course, she's not going to reject him because weak men engender fear in women. Strong men engender confidence. Strong men engender engender boldness. They engender attraction. And by getting it again, it is I'm, I'm telling you right now. And I'm just basing this on my own personal experience. Any man can give this phone number to a bunch of women. Right. 
but, but I'm telling you, it takes it takes a strong man in the face of rejection, in the face of today's culture with all the fear and people shooting people up and stabbing women because of rejection. It takes a man with boldness and forthrightness to tell a girl, hey, you know what? You seem cool. Let's hang out sometime. Put your number in my phone. Women respect that. Even if she even if she has no intention on calling you in the first place, guess what? If she wasn't going to call you anyway, what's the point of giving her your phone number only to be rejected by yourself instead of make you make her reject you? Don't give yourself that opportunity. If she it, listen, it, well, you know, I'm not going to give you my phone number, but I'll take yours. Not going to happen for me. And it really depends upon your personality as well. Well, OK, I simultaneously on one end, you said some things I 100 percent agree with. And then you all simultaneously said some things I 100 percent disagree with. Again, I always emphasize my books. My books are all about boldness. So I don't doubt you, debate you, anything to do with the impact of bold. That's that's literally what Mo One is about, is about being a balls out, bold motherfucker. So uh, you and I are on the same page as far as the impact of, of confidence, boldness. Yes, that definitely makes an impact on women. No doubt, no argument there. Again, though, a man asking for a woman's number don't mean shit. I've seen guys go up to a woman, hey, excuse me. Uh, hey, uh, my name is, is, is Leah. I was just wondering. Can I get your number and like call you sometime? Wow. What the fuck is bold about that? Now, did the guy ask for the number? Yes, he did. But that demeanor was not bold at all. I've seen a lot of weak men ask for a woman's number. So just the act of asking for a woman's number is not synonymous with a guy being confident or bold. Guys are not, if, even if you're not as weak as I just gave that demonstration, if you just say in a basic way like, Hey, my name is Frank. What's your name, Linda? Hey, why don't you give me your number so we can hang out sometime? That ain't bold. Bold well, is like, yo, my name is Frank. You a sexy motherfucker. I want us to exchange orgasm sometime in the near future. Why don't you put your number in my phone so we can make that happen? If I hear that approach, yes. That's a motherfucker. I'm going to say, okay, that was a bold getting your number approach. Right. Same with giving a man your number. On, on the flip side, I wouldn't say a man giving your number is automatically weak again. When I give a woman my number, my shit's bold. My shit is basically like, I'm going to fuck this shit out of you. And I know you want me to fuck the shit out of you. Here's my number. I know you're going to call me before the week is over. As opposed to just, hey, uh, here's my number, Linda. I, I hope you call me. And, <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? I hope sometime, you know, you, in your busy schedule, you find it in your heart to make time. Oh, my God. You know, me oh, my God. Oh, Jesus Christ. I listen, mean, when I'm saying, listen, hold on, just to be clear, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yo, listen, and I, I think if this is interesting. I think we're I think we're arguing semantics. I think what it comes yeah, down to, whether you ask for whether you get a woman's number or you give her yours. Either way, you have to come from a position of strength because if we do what if we do what you're what you're talking about, hey, you know what? Uh, I find you very attractive. Uh, do you mind if I have your number? Of course not. But when a nigga like me rolls up, hey, listen, you know what? You seem cool. You seem fairly attractive here. Put your number in my phone. We'll hang out sometime, right? Women are going to respond to that a lot more than the former. Also. When you bold approach a woman, you don't just walk up to a woman, talk to her for 30 seconds, and then go for the kill. Whether you give her your phone number or you get hers, it's you're setting yourself up for failure because you you haven't gotten her to invest in you. You have to get a woman to invest in the conversation. You don't know if she's attracted to you or not within the first 30 seconds. You have to work on building that attraction with her. No, I'm not saying that you, sit, that you sit there and talk to her for 20, 30 minutes, but you have to build attraction. Yeah. Mm. Listen, you can't. You mm. no, hold on. You gonna you get a harsh disagreement from me on this side of it. Let me. Okay. No, no. Let me finish. Let me. No, no. no let me finish. Right. You okay. got. You. You have to. You have to invest. You have to invest a little more time. Again, I'm not saying that you got to be there for 10, 15 minutes, but you don't. You don't have. You don't really have the. I don't want to call it the right, but you haven't built attraction enough to be able to give a girl your phone number after a minute conversation or depending on circumstances, if you're on the subway or whatever the case may be, this is why bold, this is why bold approaching is important. But again, you can't just go up, Hey, you know, you look good. Let's, you know, let's, let's exchange orgasms. If you haven't built attraction to her yet, it just doesn't work that way. I, well, speak for yourself. 
Speak for yourself, brother, because it has worked for me all my damn life. That's why I wrote Mo One and U said again, because this for me, that just reiterates and reemphasizes the impact. Even you talked about about boldness. Women are attracted to boldness. And when I've come at women like that, they'll either tell me at the time or later on, they'll say, oh, Alan, you had my pussy so wet because you were so bold to tell me you want to put your dick in my mouth in like the first 10 seconds of the conversation. <laughs> I've never had a man bold enough to say some shit. Like, well, what, listen, no, 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 well, here's the thing. If you I, I, like I that, it doesn't some matter of the boldest you... shit ever to a woman in the first 30 seconds of a conversation. Like, in the history of verbal boldness, and it is, I ain't gonna say it's worked to my favor 100% of the time, but more often than not, it is it is work to my favor to be exceptionally bold. I don't believe in that no, PUA build comfort, take five minutes to build comfort. If guys want to do that, I'm not gonna tell them not to do it if that's what they want to do. But I'm telling you, you can for me, I skip through that shit. I don't do that take five, six, seven, eight minutes to build comfort, build rapport. Fuck that. I'm okay, bald out. I'm gonna let a woman oh, know hey, well, guess what? what I want. Listen, Paul, listen, I want to ask you, Donna, before you reply. Why don't you? Because I think, you know, I, I'm not discounting what you're saying at all. Definitely, sure. I think mm -hmm. nobody's discounting what you, what either one of you are saying. But I want to know why. And I'll let Donna respond. But why don't you? What's wrong with the, the five or eight minute thing that you see like most guys do, which is kind of what I'm, I'm, I'm more than likely to do too. But why? What's, what's wrong with, with? I mean, what's, why don't you do the five or six minutes things? Because you're playing right into a woman's social program, and that's what they expect you to do. See, one of my, my philosophies is I'm trying to shatter a woman's social programming expectation. That's two words that my followers and people who watch me on YouTube always hear me talk about is social programming. Women are socially programmed to expect certain type of conversation from men, and particularly, particularly in the first five minutes of the conversation. And when you play into that, I wouldn't say it's a total bad thing, but you're essentially being a conventional motherfucker. To me, I want to have such an approach that makes a woman kind of almost step back like, whoa, did this guy really just say that to me? And in her mind, I wanted to be like, God damn, he just, he just shattered everything my mommy and daddy told me about how men will talk to women. And even in the instances when I've been rejected, I told this one, and I'll try to not make it lengthy, but I told this one quick story a few times on my blog talk radio show about, I was talking about times when I got rejected, rejected, I still left an indelible impression. There was a woman I'm in a club in Chicago. Okay. And in the first like 90 seconds after I started talking to her, I told her I wanted to fuck the shit out of her. And the conversation unfolded from there. Now, the first thing that happened when we were still at the club, she introduced me to like five of her girlfriends like she came out each time I was like in the lobby area. She was like, there he is. And these girlfriends like, oh, I heard you're just nasty. You just get to the point real quick. Then like nine months later, I'm at Navy Pier. I had forgotten all about this bitch. I'm with my cousin, some of his friends. Okay. And one of my cousin's friends was like, hey, man, this chick is just staring at you. And I'm looking. And I'm thinking I went to like high school or college with her. So I go up to her, I say, you know, so, you know, I can't. Refresh my memory who you are. She said, you don't remember me, Alan Roger Curry? That's point number one. This bitch remember my whole name. This is nine months after I met her. I said, did I go to college with you? She said, no. I said, where do we know each other from? She said, you remember Excalibur? I said, yeah, I've been to Excalibur a few times. She said, you're the only man in my life who from the moment you opened your mouth told me you wanted to slide my dress up and bend me over and fuck me doggy style. I said, well, damn, yeah, I, your, I know your pussy got wet, so how, did, well, how could we didn't fuck? And then she held up her engagement ring. She said, because I think I told you that I was in a relationship and now I'm actually engaged to that guy. But I have to say about you, your approach, I told about 25 girlfriends of mine about how you approach me and I actually respect your approach because all those guys that night, they were coming up to me with all these corny pickup lines, all this shit I'd heard a hundred times before. But you just came to me like, look, I'm going to skip through the bullshit. I'm attracted to you. I want to fuck you. If I can fuck you in this nightclub, I want to do that. And again, we didn't, the bad news was me and this woman didn't fuck. But just 
bitch remember my whole fucking name nine months later, man. Whereas I've had conventional conversations with women and got rejected, and I ran in women at a grocery store two weeks later. They're like, I don't remember you. Who was your name again? Alex? Alfonso? What is it again? Okay, okay. So okay. I, 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 I get, I'm not discouraging guys from doing this is for me, it's a matter of preference. I'm not gonna say that's a bad thing to do the whole take five, six, seven minutes to build rapport, because I know a lot of PUAs encourage that. I'm just saying anybody who's read my books, no, I don't do that. I, I do it here and there, but I'm all about making a bold impact within the first one to three minutes of the conversation. Okay. I'm all about I, if, if her social programming is representative of a glass jar in her head, I want to take a hammer and smash that motherfucker. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay let, me, let me let Donovan respond. Go ahead, Donovan. Yeah, I think this has turned into, and at this point, I think I think we've made it fairly clear at this point that it doesn't really matter whether you get her phone number or she give or you give her hers. I think, and I think we put that to bed. I don't think it really matters if she's attracted to you. She will respond if you give her your phone number or if you get her phone number and you text her or call her, she'll respond. What this has turned into is what kind. I guess now, I guess this is a this is sort of a debate on what on what kind of approach. I will say this, you can make a bold impact on women just by walking up, walking up to them, making strong eye contact and saying, hi, I'm Donovan. Nobody does that anymore. Okay. Um, or nobody does that anymore. And I'll tell you this, Alan, your approach, your approach is extraordinarily bold. And I think this is also a generational thing as well. You can't look, listen, back in the, dude, listen, back when I was a teenager, you probably could walk up to women and say, Hey, I'm Donovan. I, you know, listen, let's exchange orgasms, blah, blah, blah. And that, you know, that'll certainly get, that'll certainly get you in the door and make women attracted to you if they were attracted to you in the first place. But you can't do that with women anymore. You do have to make them comfortable because now we have hashtag me too and street harassment and all that other kind of stuff. By the same token, real like true alpha males, true five percenters, they don't conform to the rules of society. No one ever got locked up, as far as as far as I know, for walking up and saying, "Hey, you know, I want to do X, Y, and Z." But again, you really you really have to be you really have to be careful with women. That being said, you can be bold just by walking up and looking right in the eye. Hi, I'm Donovan. I've never used cheesy pickup lines. I've never. I've never, hey, you know, are you from Tennessee because you're the only 10 I see or are you Google, <laughs> or are you Google because I've been searching for you all day? Dude, nobody, girls don't fall for that stuff anymore. You want to know why? Because that. the because the internet was existed. You walk up, bold approach, put your hand out, hi, I'm Donovan. And you are, when she gives you her name, that's when you start the conversation. Now, here's another thing. Okay. You have to start somewhere. Now, Alan is a guy who has been who's been good with women for a while. I remember our first interview, Alan. You would, I mean, dude, you had such a knack for this stuff. Your brother told you, hey, listen, you should write a book on this. This is before people even knew who Alan Roger Curry was. Alan's the kind of guy who's always been good with women. But for the rest of the but but for the rest of men out there who grew up, you know, you know, with with the feminist life, you have to start somewhere. And where you have to start is, of course, you have to scrap the can cheesy pickup lines, but you do have to work on conversational skills and building attraction with women. Again, you don't spend 10, 15, 20 minutes with them, but it does take a little bit of time these days, especially if you're not necessarily good with, with women to begin with. You have to build your confidence and you have to you have to build her comfort level. You do have to build attraction with women. That is absolutely necessary, especially with today's women in their 20s and 30s. Maybe a few years ago, that wasn't the case. You can walk right Right up, build attraction instantly. But I'll tell you this too: if you're a, if even if you're a fat guy and you did the mode one approach, dude, you're gonna get eyeballs on you. That's that's going to be effective. But there are many different ways. There are many many different ways to be bold. Like I said before, you came on, Alan. There's there's far more ways to skin a cat than just you know. You can be bold in many many different ways. The point is this: is that it doesn't matter whether you give her your phone number or you get hers. You got to be confident and you have to be bold. I, listen boldness and straightforwardness that that's the common denominator if you are if you're beta donovan hey you know what uh, you seem cool put your put your number in my phone you're not getting shit you're gonna get five 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 one two one two or hey i find you attractive here's my you know let me i'm gonna give you my phone number you're not gonna get called back but if you are bold if you're confident if you make strong eye contact if you make your intentions clear listen i'm not trying to be your male girlfriend this isn't a this isn't a this isn't a, a platonic friendship like I'm trying to fuck. You can actually do that. You can let girls know that indirectly 
with, mm -hmm. by with what you say. You don't necessarily have to tell a girl that I want to fuck the shit out of you to let her know that I want to fuck the shit out of you. You can non well, well, no, communicate I didn't, these things. I didn't say that. I, well, see, here's what's confusing. Listening to you, Donovan. It's like you say almost simultaneously saying a lot of things where you're agreeing with me, but then it sounds like you're contradicting me because a lot of the things you just said, I totally agree with. I totally agree. Again, we both on the same page about confidence and boldness. So there's no disagreement there about stating your desires, interests, and intentions clearly in a crystal clear, straightforward manner. We seem to be on the same page about that. Okay. Um, where I'm, I guess I'm sensing the difference is when you use this phrase building attraction, I guess your definition and description of that is different than mine as are a lot of PUAs. Here is again, and I also want to make it clear that when I keep using phrases like fuck the shit, I say, I make it clear in my book and my audio book that and I, my male clients know this. You don't have to even use X rated language or sexual explicit okay. language to be straightforward. Here would be a good PG 13 example. Being my one <laughs> is I walk up to a woman and I say, you know, I think you're very attractive. I think you're very sexy, but I got to let you know up front. I have no interest in any series of purely platonic interactions with a woman. You got that? I'm, I'm not looking for anything platonic. I'm looking for something romantic or intimate. So now with that said, I would like you to share my company sometime within the next two to three weeks. What okay. say you? See, yeah, there's no profanity. Yes or no. There was no sure. X-rated language. But here's what I'm against. Spending the first even three to five minutes with stuff like, so like, you come to this restaurant all the time? Oh, God. Hey, no. I don't know. I don't do that at all. But, so, but right. uh, yeah. you know, like, what do you like to do in your spare time? You know, like, do you like, you know, you think we should just hang out yeah. sometime? Yeah. See, all that general type, vague, ambiguous type conversation, that's what I'm anti. I ain't yeah. into that general, just how you doing today? What do you think about the weather? You know, what type of job do you have? Yeah, you know? yeah, just to be clear, that is not, listen, just to be clear, that is not the, that is not the approach that I use. I don't mm -hmm. say, hey, do you come here often? How's the weather? Blah, 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 blah. Here's another thing. I never ask a woman to do anything. I don't say, hey, would you like to hang out? No, I say, hey, listen, I'm going to XYZ place. We should hang out. Or you, or actually one of my, one of my go-tos was, hey, come with me. I look her right in the eye. And just like, listen, just like with your approach, she can either say yes or she can say no. Either way, either way, that's that that's confidence. Now, the conversation that I'm talking about after I walk up bold approach, hi, I'm Donovan and you are, my name is Maria. You know, good to meet you, Maria. By the way, like, is your hair always, is your hair always this red or like what kind of shampoo do you use? I make her qualify herself to me. What I'm doing is, and, and again, this this is sort of next level game, but you have to make a woman qualify herself to you. And when I say that, and you know, you know this, Alan, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying this for you, but making a woman qualify herself to you is key to building attraction because you're letting her know, listen, I'm, listen, I find you physically attractive, so I'm walking up on you, but I'm letting you know, listen, it takes far more than physical attraction for me to be attracted to you. Like bitches like you are out here walking, you guys are a dime a dozen, but I need you to qualify yourself to me. Are you good enough for me? Yeah, I ask her, listen, like I said, I ask her things like, hey, you know what, uh, what, you know, you know, I like your shoes, you know, they, they make you look sexy or whatever. What brand are they? Right. I make her qualify her decisions, her choices, her, her, um, her, her lifestyle, her whole, her whole story. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to catch up, but I'm confused. This, this, see, I heard a couple of PUA say this, so this confuses me. You say you need a woman to qualify herself to you. Why in the fuck would you approach a woman if she isn't qualified herself? I mean, I wouldn't approach a woman if I'm not attracted to her. Why would you approach a woman? Answer, I'll answer your question because it takes more than. See, Alan, dude, we have fucked. Dude, you and I have fucked scores of attractive women, right? And it takes more than physical attraction for me to like, don't get me wrong. Just because I want to fuck a woman, just because I want to fuck a woman when I look at her doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to invest the time to fuck her. She might be attractive, but she might be a headache. She might have an ex-boyfriend who she might have an ex-boyfriend. She's worried about. She might not, she might not even like black guys. She might be, she might talk nonstop. She might, she might have a bad personality. She might be a bitch. She might have some sort of hangup. So I'm making sure, okay, 
I want to fuck you. And by the way, I never tell attractive women that they're attractive because they already know that they're attractive. That's how you separate yourself from most men. Listen, you want to know, and my girl asks me this all the time. Hey, Donovan, do I look good in this? If my cock is in your ass at the end of the night, you have your answer. So the answer to a woman's question, hey, does he find me attraction? The answer, if I approach you, is yes. Hi, I'm Donovan underscore I'm attracted enough to you to approach you. It takes a lot more than a woman's looks to impress me because again, there are a lot of good looking women out here. I'm not just gonna, I'm I'm not gonna sleep with a woman just because I find her attractive. For me, for me personally, and dude, I'll be 41, I'll be 41 this summer. It takes a lot more than that. And women have to know that as a man of value, as a man of depth, it has to take much more than a pretty face, big tits and a nice ass to impress you as a man because that impresses every man. What more can you, listen, and it's gonna be quick, fast and in a hurry, but in three to five minutes, I need you to tell me why is it I should try to fuck you other than the fact that I am physically sexually attracted to you? Women like women like to be thought of as just more than a, a little bit more than a piece of meat. And when you make her when you make her qualify herself to you, she says, "Okay, this guy has some some substance. This guy has experience with attractive women. Let me show him why I'm different from most other women." Now, of course, that's a bunch of bullshit. We all know that women are all pretty much the same. But it but by making herself qualify herself to you, what you are doing, Alan is you are separating yourself from most men by making her prove herself to you. Most women don't have to prove themselves to men. All they got to do is walk out the house looking good. Nah, not Donovan Sharp. It takes a it takes a little more than, than like I said, a pretty face, big tits, and an ISS to impress me. And I'm going to make sure by asking you questions, qualifying, building attraction, to make sure that I understand that before I get you to give me your phone number. Okay, well, before, well, you, before, you respond, two things. before you respond, two, Okay. So, because uh, I got to uh, do do something. I, 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 I we'll, we'll wrap it up in a minute. But let me do this real quick. A lot of guys this super chatting. Uh, <laughs> Alpha Male Strategies is here in the in the, in the room. Like, I try to get Bring him up. Home. Bring him in. He's like you, Alan. Uh, what's up with you dating coach niggas, man? Y'all don't ever want to come on when a nigga offer you to come on. You, Donovan. Is it light-skinned nigga thing? Do Donovan. Alan, uh, it's like uh, Alan. Y'all just show up and shit when y'all get ready. But I, I understand. I understand. Uh, let me... Uh, 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 read some of the super chats real quick, guys, and we'll let you guys respond. And also, I want to say this when Alan Roger Curry talks about changing the social programming of a woman, Alan Roger Curry is actually not only doing that but changing the social program of men too. Because his approach, it you have to actually change your own social programming. Yes, you do. You do. It, it, it's, it's not going to work because even me, as bold as fuck as I am, I'm like, <laughs> uh, all right, let me do this real quick. Okay. Um, a lot of guys have been super chatting. Okay, so hold on a second. Stefan Klingskill says, work on your body, social status, and your career, and then let them approach you and pursue you. That's something I know that you probably I disagree. disagree with, yeah, too. I disagree. Because in. women, and again, Steph, and listen, listen, De Stefan is a swole-ass nigga. Like, let's not, yeah, let's yeah. not, let's not get this twisted. But but women women have an automatic abundance mentality, right? Yeah. You can't, the reason you can't, and listen, it makes sense to build up yourself, increase your value and wait for women to approach you, but women have far more options than we do. And yeah. also it's not the natural state of things. Women don't approach men. It is a man, it is a man's job to approach women. It's yeah. what I said at the top of the show. If a woman approaches you, okay, great. But she's the one that chose you. She doesn't want to choose. She already chooses you in her mind. She wants to know that you chose her, right? Yeah. So when you approach a woman, you're showing her, okay, I'm, you know, I'm physically attracted to you. So by waiting for women to approach you, that's the lazy. And I don't want to say Stefan is lazy. Obviously, he's no. he's clearly not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to be proactive. Women, listen, women don't admire reactive men. Okay. You cannot be reactive. You must be proactive out here. That's the way this works. Oh shit! Alpha male strategies wants to come on too. <laughs> bring him in. Bring him in. Okay, hold on a second. You guys want him to come in? Uh, uh, Alan, do you mind? Yeah, bring him in. Bring him in. I'm cool. I'm cool. Hey, okay. but I want to respond to the last thing. Uh, don't, don't was there, don't. Do. Hold on, alpha male strategies. Why do y'all niggas do this, man? I try to get niggas to come on. You know what I'm saying? At a time, uh, especially you know, uh, I I can't say alpha male strategies is that bad, but Alan Roger Curry. You know, I gotta, I gotta fucking get all kind of shit for this nigga to come on. It's all crazy, you know. Alpha male strategies. I said this motherfucker, my god, the award. He won't even go pick the motherfucker up. You know what I mean? <laughs> but when they get all of you niggas at the same time, here you hey, come. I got it's mine. a light skinned hey, nigga hey, thing. Hey, wait, hold up, man. I got mine, man. Oh yeah, I know. But I'm just saying, you be, you be playing with me too sometimes. You know, I ain't gonna. I mean, my feelings be hurt. I'm just saying. Let me just do this real quick. I got a um, alpha male strategies. The link is sent. Um, 
let me say this Rashawn Williams, uh, salute brothers, uh, Bagley. Now that I've been working on my body and my approach, I attract a better quality of women. I am way more confident. Approach, thank you so much. Dewan Trace, it's not about rejection. No, it's the bullshit string alone, slow text backs, and indirect cues. You're in her web now. Uh, Stefan Clean Scales, it's not the way out, it's the alpha way to do it. You're in control when you give her your number, especially when she has choosing signs, Mr. B. Should you be in a certain financial level before even considering approaching a woman for getting into a relationship? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of questions coming in. Mr. Um, Marcus, thank yes you. No. Yeah. Miami J, thank you. Um, Doug, uh-oh. O'Shea, uh, O'Shea, uh-oh. Uh -oh. ARC versus AMS versus Donovan. He pre he predicted it. He, and AMS wasn't even here yet. Shout out to the Korean guy, Deputy McAllister. Mr. Grandeur, I, I chat her, give her my number, keep it pushing. I got student loans to pay. I got to go to work. Maurice Tansley, thank you so much. Rashawn Williams, salute brothers. Harry M, thank you so much. JB, five bucks. It's a full house. Um, so How many people we got watching? How many people? It's like over 300. Yes, at sir. least. Two or eight now. So Donnell, Donnell just uh, five bucks. Okay. So Alpha Male Strategies, uh, check the link uh, in, in your uh, uh, inbox. Donovan, if you want to write no, a, a, a article, that, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if you want to write an article on the qualifying thing, uh, I, I'd like to hear your position on that. But we need to do this more often. Go ahead, Alan Roger Curry. You want to respond to something that Donovan yeah, this said? This is Hall of Game, Volume One. Yeah, I'm actually going to yeah, make this a Hall of Game episode now. Oh shit! Blackie speaks in the building. My brother Blackie speaks is there. Over two hundred something thousand subscribers. My boy RB the breakthroughs in the in the building, Alan. So make sure oh, you be RB. I'm you got some big time YouTubers in the chat. Shout out to my brother Blackie Speaks, man. Best best hip hop channel on YouTube. Go ahead, Alex. Hey, shout out to RB, man. He be covering these NBA playoffs, man. RB, much love to you, Real. brother. Oh, he um, Cavs, hey, Cavs in seven. So, so Donovan, see, see you, you, you lost me, man. You said you would qualify a woman by asking her questions about her hair and her shoes. See, for me, man, I'm gonna be looking at that, like. If I got an ad, if I'm an employer and I got an ad and somebody responds to my ad and they come to my interview and they come to my interview and start trying to qualify me, I'm going to be like, motherfucker, get out of my goddamn office. You should have done your research on this company before you came into this interview. I'm the one who qualifying you as a potential employee. You ain't coming to qualify me as a company. Yeah, I mean, but I'm not saying they can ask me any questions. Listen, you can't make, well, listen, the reason why you do this is because you can't let a woman assume that you're automatically going to ask for her or that you're automatically going to get for, get her phone number you need them and again women already think of most men as what i call a foregone conclusion if he sees me he wants to fuck me if i go talk to him i know i'm going to get him you need to again you need to listen never ever never ever tell you you can't uh deprive a woman the privilege of working for your affection, attention, and attraction. If all she has to do is show up to get your attention and to get your time and, and attractiveness, then she's not going to value your time. This is why, this is what you cannot let a woman think that she already has it. You give her the carrot to chase. Listen, you're attractive enough, but now I need to vet you a little bit further. That's why I'm talking to you. Uh, wait, wait, first of all, I got to clarify at least one thing. Uh, you're talking about girlfriend material. We're talking about fuck buddies. Uh, same thing. One or the other, doesn't matter. Uh, no, see, for me, totally. Because, see, if we're talking about potential yeah. girlfriend material, that's what I would say I halfway agree with a lot of what you're saying. But for sure. fuck buddies, no, we, I'm sorry. I have to say we respect, we're going to have to agree to respect you just because for fuck buddy, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. All I care about is are you going to suck my dick? I don't have my dick sucked within five minutes after I met a woman, and I just spent five minutes qualifying a woman. When no, I no, want to fuck, buddy, all I want to know is I want to fuck you. Do you want to fuck me? And it's either yay or nay. I ain't going to try to create myself as no fucking challenge and all that bullshit for no fuck, buddy. Oh, okay, yeah. Then we're going to have to agree. No, 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 no. We have fuck to agree. That. No, 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 no. You're right. No, listen, you're, you're right. We are going to have to agree to disagree. As a male, you are the prize to be won, not her. You have to come off as the challenge. If a woman looks at you, as a foregone conclusion, she may fuck you, right? She may fuck you once or twice, but it is far is far more likely for her to continue to fuck you if you are a challenge. Most men, for especially attractive women, they're not a challenge. If you're that one guy that makes yourself a challenge, if you're a one guy who says to her, no, no, wait a minute, baby girl, like you look good, but it's going to take a little more to keep my attention and attraction. Let's go a little bit further. I'm not talking about having some sort of a summit. I'm not talking about having an interview. But again, just because you're a woman, just because you look good, that doesn't mean you are qualified to be with me. Not quite. Well, well, here, here's my thing. 
Okay, and this where I'm on one extreme or the other. So go ahead, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll let Alpha Male Strategies join in. I'm gonna say this one comment. Oh, okay. what's up? There he is. Here's how I make myself a challenge, and here's when I don't. And and most of my listeners know I always divide between the appeal of a man's sexual attention and companionship and the appeal of a man's non-sexual attention. I, I emphasize that. And even AMS, and see on here, I'm telling you straight forward, he's borrowed a lot of my my emphasis on valuing your non-sexual attention and companionship. That's the aspect of myself where I make myself a challenge. Women, the reason why women know I'm a challenge, and matter of fact, I'm dealing with that to be quite frank, I ain't gonna go into detail, but here right here in Miami, there's a, a honey, a beautiful Cuban honey hooked up with, and she been, she been begging me just in the last 24, 36 hours for my non-sexual companionship. So in that regard, I'm a challenge to her because she's like, dang, you ain't giving me access but when it comes to the dick, I'm the easiest dick a bitch could get. I ain't gonna even lie about the shit. I ain't gonna make it challenging for a woman to get my dick. My dick, I let women know this is some easy dick for you. But if you want my dick and and my non-sexual attention and companionship, you're gonna have to work for that shit. But if you just want dick and dick only, I'm gonna give you the easiest opportunity to get my dick possible. And if a woman Period. knows it's no, I listen. And if a woman knows, if a woman knows that getting the dick is easy, guess what? Even for a one night stand, she's not going to value that. And if she doesn't value even that one night stand, guess what? You're going to leave yourself susceptible to getting flaked on, getting rejection, et cetera, et cetera. Again, well, I don't get flaked on. I don't get flaked on. Okay. Well, I mean, listen, I, you're, I can't speak for other guys. I don't get flaked on. I, I get it. You're Alan Roger. You're Alan Roger Curry, man. You're the exception to the rule. But I'm talking about for I'm talking about for Joe. Everybody, you listen. You can't make a woman think that you are a foregone conclusion. She has to know. She's got to do at least a little bit of work to get even the dick. If okay. a woman knows you got other Alan, options, Alan, then she knows Alan. you're a challenge. Okay, Alan. Alan, okay. let's let Alpha Male okay. Strategies. Listen, I will okay. have these okay. y'all okay. niggas start showing up like you supposed to to these damn things <laughs> and stop fucking with me. Alpha male strategies, hint, hint, Donovan, hint, hint, Alan Roger Curry. All you light skinned motherfuckers play this goddamn game. I'm like, the light skinned alignment. Light skinned. S K I N I T. Okay, nah, I gotta check my schedule. Alpha male strategies, check with me 2025. All type of other shit. Alan Roger Curry. This thing will be on somebody else's goddamn live stream with 500 subscribers and shit. I'm paying the motherfucker 15 months in advance and shit. He won't even get to make me wait. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, goddamn. All right, but that, that's that's that Jim Crow shit. That's that light skin uh, shit. I know oh, what it's about. Oh, totally you stupid! Oh, you stupid as hell. All right, let's, okay, let's okay, you got me. You got me. Let's let let's Alpha Male Strategies talk because he he only come out once a month. Go, w- right. Welcome to the show again, Alpha Male Strategies. Good, 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 good to hear. Appreciate, it. Appreciate it. Shout out to all y'all brothers out there, man. Uh, my thing is, I think Alan Roger Curry Mode One is a good approach. My only my only objection with it is that it leaves a lot of ass on the table, and what I mean by that is. If you go up to, let's say you go up to women that got a crazy high initial interest in you, hell yeah, more one gonna work. If she if she look at you and she just you just do it for her, hell yeah, that's go. But let's be honest here, the average woman you go up to, your physical ain't gonna be enough to make her want to sleep with you. You're gonna have to use your personality, your charm, and all that other shit to raise her interest. So if you if you go all in like that at the beginning, if you offend her or turn her off by being so direct, this is a woman that you could have fucked on the second or third date that you just done fucked up because you were so blunt. Now, let's say let's say for whatever reason, she just look at you and her pussy just start dripping. For whatever reason, you just, you just you her prototype. You her prototype. Hell yeah, you gonna fuck. You can fuck her in five seconds if, if you just do it for her like that. But if she's a woman, she sees you as a six or a seven and not a nine or a 10, Got work to do. This is a woman that you could have fucked on the second or third date that you just blowed it with by being too direct up front. That's my only objection with Mo One is that you're going to leave a lot of ass on the table because you're going to turn a lot of women off that don't have crazy high initial interest in you. That's my only objection with Mo One. Now, if you're a guy, I'm going to tell you what I, what, when I would agree with Mo One. If Let's hypothetically say you're a married guy. And you ain't got time to date and play around with women like that because you're just trying to cheat on your wife and you ain't got time to charm her and shit like that. Then, yeah, be more one because you ain't got time to do all that sweet nothing with her and date her and shit like that anyway. But if you're a guy and you just out here dating and you're not in a relationship and you 
<clears throat> so to speak, like, you know, I had a friend that used to pay for ass. And I said, man, why you pay for ass? He said, man, I got a wife at home. I don't got time to date these bitches. He said, I just pay them straight up. So in that instance, I think more one is a good choice. If you marry or in a monogamous relationship or something like that, and you ain't got time to date a woman, then be more one. But if you single, you're going to leave a lot of ass on the table. That's my, my only objection with it. Okay. Okay. Can I respond to that, O'Shea? Yes, you can. But let's try to make it, you know, kind of quick. I know you like to talk. I know all y'all like to talk, but let's go ahead. Come on. Let's go ahead. Go ahead. Now, motherfucker, number man. one, I, I've been hearing that challenge literally for like probably like 15 to 20 years. Okay. And so, so in that sense, uh, AMS is not the first one to bring that to me. A lot of guys feel that way. But I can say as a person who's executed more one and taught others how to execute it, I've never le left ass on the table by being more one. Here's the reality. Fe and fellas who listen to my YouTube regularly know this. And studies back me up on this. Women know within the first as quickly as the first 30 to 60 seconds after they meet you and at the absolute latest, somewhere between the 10 to 15 minute mark, if they're going to fuck you. Oh, it don't take a woman two or three days to debate if they're going to fuck you. They know at the absolute latest, I would say a woman knows that the 15 minute mark of her first conversation with you, let if she's going to give you the pussy. All right, let me answer that. Let so, me answer that, Ellen. For, wait, let me finish. For no, any no, guy no. to think that any conversation that a guy's having with a woman that, that goes beyond 15 minutes, all you're doing is, is engaging in entertaining conversation. Here's the thing. Most women prefer, prefer, there's exceptions. Most women are always going to prefer a combination of your sexual and your non-sexual companionship. That's why most women love relationships because it gives them a combination of your sexual and your non-sexual companionship. And in some women's cases, it gives them a trifecta. Your sexual companionship, your non-sexual companionship, and access to your financial resources and material possessions. So that's why I was telling Donovan earlier that I look at girlfriend material and fuck buddy material totally different. Because if I look at a woman as girlfriend material, I want to provide that woman with both my sexual and my non-sexual com companionship. But when I'm just trying to fuck, my biggest thing is this. I want to make it clear to women this. When I fuck you, you're not going to get me to hold your hand in the park and all that shit and go to the movies with you and, and the bowling alley with you every week and spend 10 hours a week talking to you on the phone about how fucked up your job is and other bullshit. We're going to hook up for fucking. You either down for that. Or you and women again, women, they'll try to make you believe that they're not. They know in their mind if they're down for that or not. And see, while a lot of guys think that you need to take a few days, a few weeks to smooth women out, is what they're really saying is this is how a lot of guys get pussy. They pretend they give women the misleading impression that they are going to offer a woman both access to their sexual and their non-sexual companionship. And then once they get the pussy, what do they do? Come on, every, every guy here, if they be honest, they know what most guys do. Once they get the pussy, one time, two times, three times, four times, they just go ghost on that bitch. And then that bitch says, oh, he was a dog. And I agree with the woman and call him a dog. Because you misled that woman into believing that you wanted to give her access to both your sexual and your nonsense. See, that's where I separate myself from a lot of guys. Let, let, I'm you know, you're right. Hey, listen, you're right. Hold on, guys. Right. 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 Wait, let me finish and then okay, I'll let you guys. I'm, I'm going to wrap up in like two minutes. Okay. I make it clear to women that if I meet a woman <laughs> that I just want to fuck, okay. I make that adamantly clear that, hey, I'm just looking to fuck. Number two, I understand what you were saying, AMS, and some other guys have also said this about the cheating thing, but I, I want to make it clear it is an Alan Roger Curry thing. I don't believe in cheating. To me, that actually goes against more one principle. Like, I've had some guys come to me as potential clients and say, Alan, I want to learn how to be more one so I can fuck more bitches on the side, I'm like, what do you mean on the side? They're like, oh, I got a wife or I got a serious girlfriend. I was like, dude, that ain't my one. Mo one is when your game is so strong that women know you fucking other women and they still want to give you the pussy. I ain't never had a lot of no bitch to fuck. I ain't never, I, I don't, I, I can't remember the last time I cheated on a woman. When I fuck women, they know I'm fucking other women. They know I'm fucking other women. I know married guys who are more one. Their wives know they got bitches. They know they, that's what's called a concubine. For your listeners not familiar with this term, a concubine 
is the additional lover that a married man has that his wife knows he has, as opposed to a behind, sneaky behind the back additional lover, which would be called a mistress. Let me ask you. So I don't, okay. I don't believe in the cheating no. shit, but no. that's no. my no. move. No. Hold on a second, guys. Let me, let me respond to that. Hold on one second, wait one second. Myself. Guys, do me a favor, get the likes up. It's uh all that shit and whatever. If you want to ask questions, super chat, uh, go ahead, uh go ahead, Let me go to Donovan. Go ahead, AMS. Let me let me go. Uh Alan, on that on the on the last part, what you said about uh getting sex from a woman and then being out. Well, see, it's it's two folds to dating. But full sex, the man is trying to show the woman, you know, different qualities so she can sleep with him. Now, after I slept with her, she has to show me other qualities to where I want to keep sleeping with her. So if all you bring to the table is sex, after I fuck you, you damn right I'm out. Because you don't cook, you don't do shit. All you do is all you good for is fucking. So after I fuck you two or three times, if you don't got no other qualities to bring to the table, you goddamn right I'm out. Now, if you know how to massage a back every now and then to cook a goddamn steak, then maybe I'll stick around. But these <laughs> bitches don't bring shit to the motherfucking table. So... I got to do the dog and pony show before I fuck, but after I fuck, you got to do the dog and pony show and show me some shit what you got so I stick around. And let me go back to that other point where you said within the first, you know, five minutes, a woman knows she want to fuck you. A woman knows if, she, if she's willing to fuck you, that don't mean right now. That there means you that go. In the, future, Just because, in the future, maybe, you know, two or three weeks, I'll fuck you. It don't mean today. So oh, I didn't say that. I didn't say it necessarily meant that date. No, I didn't say that. That is true. A woman knows she wants to fuck you. I agree with that. If she's open to the possibility. But once you start opening your fucking mouth, if you're a fucking cornball or a goofball, it can go right out the window because I right. didn't done that shit. I done, I didn't have women. Listen, Alex, I done had girls who was crazy hot initial interest on me on the first date where I could tell this bitch wanted to fuck me. And then by the end of the night, I could tell I done lost all the in, uh, the interest in the girl because I fucking either I was I did something wrong. I don't know what I did wrong, but I did something wrong. So you got a girl could a girl could look at you and say, This motherfucker hot, I wanna fuck him, and you'll see that. And she'll be blowing up your phone through the week. Then you go on a date and you can fuck it up. And then you like the bitch don't even call you back. So it's more attributes. Just because a woman can look at you and wanna fuck, that don't mean that you can't lower her interest. Depending the time between when y'all fuck, so th that's the only thing I got with that. A woman does know oh. she's gonna fuck you. I agree with that. Well, yeah. well I agree with what you just said, yeah, but I want to talk real quick, Alan. Okay, <laughs> Alan, you gotta share, yeah. Alan. You gotta share, Alan. I know, I know. It's well, hard. No, he's there. Point. I just give me thirty <laughs> seconds. Just thirty no, seconds. Just the nose will turn to no. <laughs> no. Okay, forty five <laughs> seconds. Forty five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> he went from thirty to forty five. Other people, Alan. Other people. I know you won all the awards on the. I know you feeling like no. I gotta let somebody else talk. Alan. No, no, no. I was no. just going no. Seriously, th this is just one comment. I was gonna say this. I agree with eighty percent of what what AMS just said. He said, from the time you open your mouth to the time you fuck him, you can potentially lose their interest. I agree with that. Here's my quick disagreement. I don't believe that being boldly straightforward is that thing that loses a woman's interest. See, that was quick. Okay, whoa, that, that's the quickest that you ever did. I know, give, give, oh, give me another point, oh, Shay. Give me another point. Uh, <laughs> Alan, you know what you got fucking shit to say when I tried to get you on here, you make me wait a fucking month. I'm actually gonna write all the articles for the Monday, me and Donovan and shit, but here you are. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Edward, you see how tricky the nigga is? Go ahead, go ahead, uh, go ahead on uh, Donovan, go ahead, dog. Yeah, Um. listen, if a woman wants to fuck you initially and you make it, I guess you make it easy for her. If you, if you let her say, listen, all you got to do is stay conscious and you know, you're going to get the dick in her mind. Listen, she may be sexually attracted to you, but in her mind, she may subconsciously say, you know what? He was attractive, but that was easy. I wonder why men ask all the time. Why do women flake on me? The reason why women flake on you is because you made it too easy. But listen, whether you give her your number or you get hers, if you if you project to her either directly or indirectly that, hey, listen, all you got to do is show up and you're going to get the dick. This is what this is why men get flaked on this, because you made it too easy. You're not a challenge for her. Now, as far as being deceptive with women, I don't know I, whether you lie to women or not. You don't really lie directly or indirectly. You, you, listen, you can certainly lead a woman to believe one thing when you're really after another. 
But but again, women aren't stupid. Women know. Listen, women know when a guy is just trying to fuck. Even if a man says, "Hey, yo, baby girl, I'll take care of you." Yo, if you got that game, if you got that swag about you, they know they ain't trying to. They know we ain't trying to wipe you up. They want it. Listen, they want to get the dick. But then when they get used and abused, and all her girlfriends say, "Yeah, why you let that nigga use and abuse you for two weeks?" And all of a sudden he was out. Now she has the ability to say, "Well." He, I had the impression that he was going to take care of me, so that's why I was a hoe. And, and again, women use this as plausible deniability to be hoes. Well, I thought he would take care of me. I thought he was the one when in actuality, all she wanted was that dick. That's all that was. Listen, guys, a man with options makes it hard because it is. If you make it too easy for a woman, you call that. Listen, this is what makes men look desperate. And Alan's approach is not really making it. I don't I wouldn't call it making it easy because a bold approach is not easy to do at all. But guys, you have to understand there's a difference between chasing and choosing. Yes, women want you to chase them, but going after women doesn't make you a beta male. It makes you a fucking man. And if you choose a woman and then let her know, listen, hey. It's going to take more than just sexual attraction to keep me around. These are the men that they don't flake on. You know what? I like that guy. He took he took the time to, to to make me qualify myself to him. Obviously, this guy, and again, this is all subconscious. They're not telling themselves or their girlfriends this, but they know this is a man who has experience with attractive women. He didn't just walk up and give me his phone number and then meet me at the hotel on Saturday night. No, nah, he made sure he vetted me thoroughly to make sure that even if this was just a one-time fling, that I, that I was going to value this one-time fling. And again, just because a woman knows she's going to fuck you doesn't mean that she will. I've talked to a lot of women who say, yeah, that guy is hella hot. As long as he doesn't open his mouth, everything will be fine. All right, let me just uh, do this real quick. And uh, guys, Black Ocean, I work and travel a lot. One night stands or one or two days of talking before a fucking make up the majority of my sex life. Don't got time to be playing hard to get in mind games with bitches. However, I'm like a nine. All right, let me just go to the sticky so much. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, it depends. I just want to ask this question, right? Because Stefan Kling skills talks about, um, I'll start with alpha male strategies. Um, cause alpha male strategies talks about, you know, the self-improvement, uh, a lot on the channel. He talks about, you know, getting in the gym, stuff like this. So Stefan talks about, you know, you work on your body, social status and money and career, and then you let women approach you. Okay. So he's a younger guy. So alpha male strategies. Do you think that if a guy gets himself in such a position, he doesn't have to approach women anymore. They will approach him. What do you, what do you think about that? You wait for women to do choosing signals, but you still got to do the approach. Women, women yeah. are petrified. Women are petrified of rejection. All right, women, women yes. typically are not the only women that typically gonna approach you are the three hundred pound gorillas who are mad aggressive. <laughs> I'm just, hey, nigga, I'm trying three, to fuck you'll you. Get a, you'll get a three hundred pound girl come up to you real quick and tell you how she'll fucking suck the shit out of you. Hell yeah, and but, she will. Yeah, but you is not. You not gonna get that hundred and thirty pound waitress hot waitress at the bar to do that. No. So what I tell guys to do is wait for choosing signals. If you're in a position to wait for choosing signals and then make your approach. That's what I do. I, I, I typically I typically don't like cold approaches. I, that's me personally. What I do is I already got my rotation. So when I go out or whatever, I'm not in a thirsty mindset where I'm out just mad approaching women. I already got me a nice rotation now. So if I'm out or whatever, I'm just out enjoying myself. I'm typically not out looking for ass, all right, because I already got me a nice rotation. And I and I, I tell guys, I want all my guys to be in a position where they can be picking choosy like this. Well, I only approach women who send me choosing signals that I'm attracted to. But I put myself in a position like that by having my rotation already. Most guys ain't going to have the ro rotation I got, so maybe you don't have that luxury because that is a luxury. I know Donovan's in a relationship, and I know Alan Roger Curry got his concubine. So, <laughs> but we'll we'll be in we'll be in a, we'll be in a position to where if we out we ain't got to have that thirsty vibe like I got to get laid tonight. All right, mm -hmm. I'm already getting laid, so I only would approach women that I'm attracted to that sending me choose the signals. Okay, no, this is very good. Let's, let's go to Alan Roger Curry. Uh, Alan Roger Curry, what do you? Because the, the guy who wrote this was a little young, uh, like mm -hmm. 21 or 20 years old. So, what would you say to to that? statement of you know you you don't have to approach it you know women are going to come to you well uh, he, he's two-thirds right uh, well first of all before i get to it i'm gonna say two things about you O'Shea. number one i'm gonna publicly apologize because you've been ribbing me so hard because yeah. yeah i have you yeah. know and, 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 and my schedule is genuinely busy and normally if i'm out of town working with one-on-one -on -one clients i don't even make time to do spontaneous you know but 
to tell your listeners, O'Shea, yes, O'Shea has been nothing but great to me. And he <laughs> will, he'll, he'll call me, he'll say, hey, Alan, he'll even give me a two weeks notice. He'll say, hey, Alan, in two weeks, I want to do this discussion about this. And, and, and I ain't gonna lie, 80 and 90% of the time, I'm gonna be like, no, man, I got something going on that day. And then O'Shea be like, man, fuck you then, man, get off the phone, like, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I apologize, but now that you do spontaneously have not one daily coach, but three, this should be pay per view. They have three yeah. notable motherfuckers on here like this, particularly that you didn't even schedule it like this. Because we should have like 900 people watching. At the same time, because y'all won't show up. I got to get it hot and get to so your one body get interested. He come on. Here come Alpha Mel. I can't even get Alpha Mel strategies to go get this goddamn plaque that he posted. Get then and send this shit back to the goddamn warehouse. So <laughs> it's no, it's no use to, you know what I mean? Like for real, y'all niggas. Go See, ahead. I'm just opposite every guy. You know, you know, I was standing at the post office the night before. Like, yeah, is my plaques here yet? They's like, no, I was scared. They ain't here yet. Yeah, I'm waiting for my plaques. You know what? So, I was uh, I kind of mad. I brought the dating coaches to the battle sphere, man, because y'all are some of the most conceited, stuck up motherfuckers on planet Earth. Y'all well, we have, have reason to be that fucking that's, egos, yeah, it's, dog. It's, like, it's, 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 the ego is well founded, my friend. I think. That's yeah, you <laughs> dating culture game guys. Don't get me wrong. Y'all have done a lot for the manosphere. You three, like y'all took it to the net. Y'all took it to another level. I couldn't have taken this shit. But <laughs> motherfuckers are stuck up. All of you niggas. Well, my, my, response, my, my daddy, y'all make more money than me, and all. I'm, I'm mad. But go ahead, go ahead. I'm trying to be like you. I'm living off ramen noodles, nigga. You don't want to be broke, dog. You don't want to be broke. Sure. Go ahead, Alan. Uh. Oh, to respond to your guy, was well, speaking of Negro Manosphere, I wrote an article, okay. and I've talked about this multiple times on my channel. I always generally divide getting women in bed. I say there's only really five general methods of getting a woman in bed. And that's attraction, seduction, dishonesty and manipulation, transactional sex, or what most people call tricking or whining and dining. Oh, yeah. I and know then about coercion. And then coercion, which would include rape, date, rape. And uh, uh, now I, I'll touch on each one of them. Attraction. Attraction is the one that most plays into this comment, the, the guy you mentioned comment. Attraction is basically when you got it going on so much in terms of your physical look, your, your, your demeanor and disposition, the way you dress, kind of car you drive, basically all the exterior shit that would that would attract a woman that quite frankly you ain't really got to say shit that woman gonna just look at you and say okay i'm gonna get that motherfucker some pussy related to some alpha male strategy you said earlier that would be a situation where your job is simply not to fuck that shit up say something that's gonna fuck it up mm -hmm. so that's where that, that falls under my the, the category of attraction. You you just got to be a sharp together motherfucker. The women who want to fuck you, they gonna come out the woodwork. So guys, just be patient. The women gonna they gonna present themselves to you. Seduction comes into play when a woman's on the fence, either about having sex with you, period, or in more often in cases like with my case. I have a lot of women who I've met who, as I mentioned earlier, who've preferred to want me to look at them as girlfriend material, but I more so looked at them as fuck buddy material. So, of course, their attitude was, well, I would have sex with you if, you know, if you were my man, if we were in a long-term relationship. Yeah, but, but, uh, you give me the you ass know, first, and I'll give I'm you the not girlfriend not final I'm not into casual sex. I'm not into casual Now, there's oh some women, God, and there's some bitches. women's defense. Some women, if they tell you they're not into casual sex, they really do mean that. There's some women who genuinely, but I, I, I don't know what the scientific is, but I give my rough estimation. Three fourths of the women who tell you that they're not down for casual sex, they just trying to protect their image and reputation. And it's those situations where seduction, the main component of seduction that comes into play is persuasion. You got to know how to be a seductively persuasive motherfucker. Matter of fact, that's why I'm in Miami, to teach motherfuckers some of these skills. You got to know the <laughs> art of persuasive charm. Because when women give me that initial, no, you know, I don't do the casual sex thing. Yeah, that's, a shit, that's, a, that's what we call a shit test. What she's doing is testing your metal, testing your resolve. 
testing if you're going to buy into the bullshit that she is feeding you, right? And listen, every I'm, dude, if I can't tell you how many, I can't tell you how many girls who have told me, you know what, Donovan, I'm not fucking you tonight. Guess what? 30 minutes later, my cock was in her mouth and then her ass. Women tell me all the time. <laughs> women tell me all the time. I'm not into casual sex. Well, sex. Well, those are the women that I am casually fucking. Like that's the way it works. So it's just what you said, Al. And I totally agree. The reason she tells you that is to protect her image. But this is what we call in, I guess, the PUA community as slut shields. She doesn't want. And again, part of seduct part of seduction is bringing out a woman's inner slut without her making without making her feel like one. Right now, you can make her feel like a slut when your dick is in her. But on the initial approach and response, you can't make her feel like a slut. If you can, if, if you can bring out, if you can make her, if you can bring out her inner slut later without making her feel like one a little bit later on, then you're good to go. At that, at that point, at that point, then you have convinced her, hey, you can have sex with me, you can be a slut, but guess what? Your secret's safe with me. Those are the guys that women go home with. Okay, Alan, hold that point, hold that point, hold that point, hold that point. And somebody says, congratulations to Alpha Male Strategies on this continued success. Congrats to Donovan Sharp and Alan Curry on being guest speaker to the 21 convention. I actually might go to that. It's like a thousand dollars for the ticket. Bruh, bruh, you need to go. But I'll tell you what, though, all these guys on the panel, right? We're going to do, I'm, I, I'm behind the scenes, I've talked to Donovan. We're, you know, me and Alan Roger Curry talking about, we're going to do a Negro Manosphere convention. I'm going to fly all of you guys out that want to come and speak. So I would love to have all three That's guys right. on the panel be the first in, in speakers. I've, I've talked to, uh, Ron will do it. Uh, so I gotta I gotta get my super chats up because you know Alpha Male Strategies, he's gonna charge me at least two collard green sandwiches. But <laughs> nice. would, would all you guys be willing to come out to a certain city and yeah. do, do the 20 the, the Negro convention? It's gonna be 21, it's gonna be like two plus one. So let's do it. Let's do it, man. I'm in. Will come out, Alpha Male Strategies. I'll be that, bro. You you uh, Alan Roger Curry? Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, O'Shea. So you quit ribbing me, man. I just did you a solid, man. You know, I, I was normally going to have to cut off about right now, but I text my client and I pushed us back a little bit okay. to give me more time to participate yeah, this in this. Yeah, this is an awesome oh, discussion. Man, thank this you, man. Listen, oh, yeah, I appreciate it. So I'll tell you what, guys. Hopefully that within the 12 months, uh, we'll have uh, our own convention, um, you know what I mean, somewhere like, you know, D.C. or Atlanta area or someplace where a lot of niggas is at. And uh, ATL would be good. So, I'll, you know, all you guys coming out would be great. You know, we'll, 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 we'll do it there. But let's let Alpha Male Strategies weigh in on it. No, uh, no, I, you didn't let me finish. I, I, oh, I, I, I was, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was talking about the five methods. I only got the two of them. Okay, because on seduction now, and, and the follow-up on what Donovan said, I agree with the first two-thirds of what he said, but I actually – disagree with the last third and in his defense though it's not something i haven't heard my matter of fact this is some my own cousin i mentioned this on one of my youtube episodes my own cousin has challenged me on this he said uh he essentially said hey he said cuz man i love you more one thing man but um oh first i'm gonna you, you guys familiar with a guy named dante nero does that name ring a bell to anybody no, no. I, i've never heard of him no he's a former street pimp he was uh there was a comedian, the late great uh, Patrice O'Neill was real funny. Oh yes, yeah. Patrice. And he would talk about dating relationships, and he actually had a lot of humor that I would call Mo One esque. He had a lot of Mo One esque type humor. And anyway, one of his closest friends before he died was a guy named Dante Nero. Dante Nero used to be a street pimp, turned uh, a bouncer, and then entertainment uh, comedian. Anyway, he interviewed me on his podcast called The Beige Phillips Show. He was probably the first one who did it on podcast for it. He said, he said, my brother Alan, man, I love your more one shit, man. But man, he said something similar to what Donovan said. He said, man, dang, my only bone to pick with you, man, is you, you like treat, you, you can't, he said, I believe in fucking hoes without treating them like hoes. He said, with your more one approach, you like almost force a woman to acknowledge that she just a straight up hoe. And my cousin, he said, man, yeah, man, you kind of treat fuck buddies like they fuck buddies. Because I don't want to throw my cousin under the bus, but what he does is he wines and dines women for oh, a yeah, couple of days, yep. takes them out to lunch and dinner. Now, most of the time, he will get the pussy, but see, he does that whole, but then he's had a lot of drama because of that. Because women thought he was going to girlfriend him up when he wasn't. So all that to say is this, man, I disagree with Donovan's point that you can't, he said you can't treat a slut before your dick becomes a pussy. That is so not true, man. I would say just the opposite. Women, number one, women, deep, deep, deep down, women love being treated like a slut. They love being treated like a slut. 
Now, if you're talking about treating like a slut in front of a bunch of motherfuckers, then yeah. They, no, no woman with any respect for herself, if you're in a room full of people, wants to be. But I'm talking about if you one-on-one with a woman, women love. Matter of fact, I did an episode when I was talking about being women's other man, because I've been a number of women's other man, the guy that they was cheating on their husband with or cheating on a boyfriend with. And I made the point that when a woman is cheating on her husband, her fiance or boyfriend, she never wants two of the same lovers. For your listeners, O'Shea, guys in the chat room, make a note of this. No woman ever wants two of the same lovers. This is what most women normally want if they're in a relationship or they're married. They want their husband, fiance, or boyfriend to be the romantic lover. The guy who's going to put rose petals on the floor, run bubble bath, tell them how much they love them, make love to them. And then if they got a guy on the side, they want you to be that guy that's going to come on the crib like, bitch, get on your knees and suck yeah, my Yeah, alpha dick. fucks, beta bucks. Yeah. Like my balls, bitch. And they'd be like, oh, you so nasty, daddy. You so nasty. Slap me, daddy. Bam. Suck this dick, bitch. And some guys be like, damn, Alan, that sounds abusive and shit. That sounds mean spit. No, 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 I'm telling you, all women got a good girl side that they like to be played up to, but they got a hardcore slut side. Let me, like listen, let me, okay, yeah, let me, let me, let me, hold on one second. I gotta, I gotta clear, I gotta, okay, I gotta clear this up. When I'm talking about giving a girl plausible deniability, I'm talking about on the initial approach. And, and again, this is just a fundamental difference between me and you. If you meet a girl at a bar, you're talking her up, you're building attraction, blah, 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 blah. If you tell a girl, hey, do you want to go back to my apartment and fuck? Maybe you get results from that. Maybe mm-hmm. you don't. But if you are a man of value, if you are a man that she can come to respect, she doesn't want she doesn't want you to think she's a slut. This is why you have to tell her, hey, do you want to come back and look at my vintage coin collection? She knows good and goddamn well she's not looking at one fucking vintage quarter before she sucks your dick. But you have to give her that plausible deniability so that she doesn't look like a slut in front of you. You know she's a slut. She knows she's a slut. And she knows that you know she knows she's a slut. But, but again, it's those mm-hmm. slut shields. She doesn't want you to. Th- she doesn't want you to think that you think she's a slut. You guys both know the game, but women, just like you said, Alan, women are fixated on the imagery of things. They are very. They are extremely concerned about the way things look. You both know deep down inside, you're gonna be fucking slapping her in the face with your dick. On the outside, she needs that to not be the case until you get behind closed doors. That's okay. What I'm, I, I, I'm gonna tell you why I'm vehemently against that. We gotta let Alpha Male Strategies talk, Alan. Share, 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 share. Go ahead, Alpha Male Strategies. The main thing, the, the first point I seen with Alan was when he said his second point past the physical was seduction. Well, my issue with that is if you're going to do more one, you kill the seduction seduction chance. You don't get a seduction a chance if the woman don't find you physically attractive. So mm. when you you teaching guys seduction, but you you teaching guys seduction, but if you saying if I if they go up mode one, if a woman don't find them crazy physically attractive, they never get to use the seduction. So the point I'm trying to say is most women, Alan, that you go up and approach, you're going to be on the fence is what I'm saying. Most women, you're going to be on the fence. It's going to be a select group of women that you can go up to that's going to be like, fuck yeah, I'll fuck this motherfucker. But There's a few and far women, between, though. Most women, gonna, you're going to be on the fence, fence, and that's where the seduction is going to come in at. That's my only thing, is that most women are not going to see you as a 9 or a 10. Most women, the average woman that finds you attractive is going to see you as like a 6 or a 7, and you're going to be on the fence. I want to fuck them, too, is what I'm saying, Alan. I want to well, fuck well, them, well, too. See, here, here's the sticky point I am with this, is that I can't go into detail and respond to that. Cause then I would lose money. I'm just gonna keep shit real. Cause that's the reason I'm, I'm in Miami is because I know how to teach motherfuckers verbal seduction skills that get around them. everything you say in AMS, but I'm not gonna get into detail. But I'll say this, here's why I was going back to what Donovan said. Essentially what he said, again, I, I've heard these challenges multiple times before. This is the whole reason why I wrote my book which is a very popular book of mine, a lot of my fans, called The Possibility of Sex. See, here's what a lot of guys don't realize. A lot of guys think they know the game backwards and forwards. But you gotta realize, women know the fucking game too. Women know the fucking game too. What do I mean by that? Here's the deal. There's a lot of women that I refer to these women in my books as manipulative time wasters. Manipulative time wasters. In other words, 
let me to recap. Most of your listeners, O'Shea, know these four archetypes, but just for the record, I'm going to list my four archetypes. I always highlight my books. Reciprocators, that's a woman who, once you let her know you want to fuck her, she's going to pretty much let you know she wants to fuck too. Rejector, you let her know you want to fuck her, she's going to pretty much straightforwardly tell you, no, I'm not interested. Wholesome pretender, erotic hypocrite. That's what we were just alluding to. That's the woman that is always going to make you believe that her first preference is for a long-term monogamous type relationship. But if your seduction skills are A+, plus, you'll be able to persuade her to have short-term non-monogamous sex. And then manipulative time wasters. These are women who want you to think. They want you to believe that you got a chance of getting in their pants. And see... When you are vague and ambiguous and misleading, which is what a lot of guys who believe in doing the schmoozing thing do, those women are going to play the fucking shit out of you. Trust yeah, me, nobody, I got so many stories listen, from talking about schmoozing women. And, and that's why I'm, t- I'm saying that you got to be straightforward. If you are vague and ambiguous, if you don't make it clear that you just trying to fuck, you're going to get played, man. Even if something as simple as taking a woman out to dinner two times, a woman to go out to dinner with you two times, and right after that singing there, she'll be like, thank you, I had a great time. You'd be like, so wait, ain't nothing else happening? Oh, yeah, I, I, listen, I appreciate it. I agree there. with you. Listen, I agree with you 100%, but that's not, that's not what we're talking about, right? Obviously, you don't well, take what, a woman What are you, what are you talking about when you say, because you, you keep saying don't go out of your no. way not to treat a woman. What do you mean by don't go out of your way not to treat a woman like a slut? What do you mean by that? Okay, again, it's plausible deniability. You treat her like a slut behind Mm -hmm. closed doors. But again, on the initial approach, you can't, and again, you you can say to a woman, hey, let's go back to my place and fuck. Listen, sometimes you'll have success with that. Sometimes you won't. But the point is, is a woman doesn't want to, she doesn't want to look and feel like a slut, at least not yet. It's your job to make her look and feel like a slut. Have you you ever had a woman pay you money for phone sex? No. Okay. I rest my case. Okay, that doesn't mean no, 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 whoa, whoa. That doesn't mean that I'm. That doesn't mean that I'm incorrect in what I'm saying. What I'm telling you, it means that it means you're speaking for yourself, is what I'm saying. I'm saying, but I'm not saying that you're wrong for what you're saying for you. But if you're saying that for all guys, I am vehemently saying you're wrong. Because I'm telling you, I've used the initial approach and treated women like a slut. Initial approach, and I've got my dick sucked within ten minutes after meeting the woman. Right. And nobody no. can tell me that I haven't had that happen. But I'm and again, then you're the best, Dante. Now he had the same argument. He said, Alan, you don't give women room for plausible denial. He said the exact same thing. And I broke him down when he said it. I broke him down when he said it. That don't mean shit in my world, man. Plausible okay, deniability in my world don't mean shit. Okay, okay, that's, I mean, let's again, down, again, that's, go ahead, Donovan. Again, that, listen, listen, Alan, you're absolutely right. There are women out there who will, you know, who will suck your dick ten minutes after saying, "Hey, look, slut, let's go back to my or or you know, hey, listen, I'm trying to fuck this and that and the other." But that's not the way it is anymore, right? It doesn't, it doesn't, it just doesn't work that way anymore. For again, you, you, for you, don't speak for everybody. For you, okay. I, I think, I think, I think what's happening is. I think you're misunder- you're misunderstanding my point. I'm just letting you know that especially especially when it comes to attractive women, on the initial approach, listen, when you're in the bedroom, you can call them all kinds of names, et cetera, et cetera. But they have they don't, if you are a man of value, that women don't want you to think that they're a slut. This is why women tell you I'm not into casual sex. I don't fuck guys on the first date. Oh dude, I've God. had so many women tell me this, and dude, nine times out of ten, I end up fucking them on the first date and having casual sex. The reason why they tell me this is because they hold me in high regard because my game is tight, my value is high, I have confidence, hold eye contact. Just like mine is, just like mine is. And see, I guess why I'm getting a little passionate here, it's like you saying, Alan, I respect your game, but at the same time, you're saying, Alan, what you're suggesting to guys, I'm telling you in the 21st century doesn't work, and I'm saying to you, it does work. No, it that's not no, no. This weekend in Miami, man. I okay, met a Cuban. If I showed you a picture of this chick, you'd be like, "Damn, that bitch is bad. She's fine in a motherfucker." In okay, a very Alan, first conversation, Alan, man. Alan, that is listen. What? That is not. That is not what I said. I said at the beginning of this episode that, hey, listen, you and I have had great success. We just take different roadmaps to get there. There's no right or wrong answer here. I'm telling you from my point of view. 
attractive women, the attractive women that I've dealt with, they don't want to be, they don't want to look or feel like a slut. And in your experience, a, a lot of them don't mind looking and feeling like a slut. There's no wrong answer here. I'm not saying that, dude, I'm, like I said, you fuck more women than I have. Like you've been in the game longer than I have. I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong, but I'm telling you that based on my personal experience, women need that plausible deniability because when they tell their girlfriends, ooh, what happened between you and Donovan? Ooh, he told me, let's go back to his place. And I did it. Girls these days are going to be like, wait, all he did was tell you to come back to his place and you went and fucked him. No, they want that plausible deniability. So when they say, hey, look, you fucked a guy, what, once or twice? Yeah, well, he was charming in. I did go up to his place to look at his coin collection or look at his Goldfist collection. What else was I supposed to do? I was there anyway. Again, plausible deniability keeps women from feeling like sluts. It, I mean, at least I mean, that's in my world. I mean, I mean, I mean, I hold on, Alan, hold on, Alan, Alan. We got uh, to let somebody else talk. So we'll do this real quick. There's people on the panel. So let's do this real quick. Alpha male strategies. You've heard what Alan Roger Curry is saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you hear what Donovan is saying. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you know Alan Roger Curry's been around a long time. Donovan, you, you've been around less than these two. Okay, oh, yeah. so in 2018, right now, Alan Roger Curry. To be to be fair, how much are you? I mean, how much are you charging for this session you're doing right now? You're about to do in Miami. How much is this costing, Alan? My <laughs> three days one in person. How much does it cost? I have three one-on-one -on -one sessions. I got a four-hour session. That's a thousand. I got an eight-hour session. Damn, I'm in the wrong 15, business. 15. And I do a three-day, 14-hour session that's uh, about $2,800. Okay. So, obviously, motherfuckers is paying for this shit. So, let me ask you this. And people right. pay for your right. shit, too. Everybody on the panel. That's what I'm saying. You, yeah. you guys are some of the top black dating coaches right now that, that, that people know, right? So, you, you all getting paid. So, who what is more relevant? with Alan? Because I think what I'm hearing is, like, okay, the women have changed. I'm not saying that Donovan's saying that, but what I'm hearing, like, okay, the women of today are different culturally so that the approach that Alan would teach is it, it, it now he's saying it's not effective but it may not be as effective as it once was so I'm, I'm asking you what do you think about what the both of them are saying my thing is I think I agree with Donovan every girl that I fuck with on the first date I always ask them back to my crib on the first date and first thing come out their mouth what are we gonna do at your crib and I say oh we're gonna have a glass of wine or something just so, like he said, have plausible deniability. Well, you know, I'm not gonna say, "Oh, we're gonna go there and fuck." You know, I, you know, I, I, I pretty much know in her head she got to be thinking that what's on my mind, but I can't say that. You see what I'm saying? You can't. I just, you can't say that. So I always say, "Well, I got some wine. We can go back and have a couple glasses of wine in my crib and watch TV or something like that." It's not like I'm gonna say to go back and fuck. And until another point of what you said, I want to make this abundantly clear too, Alan, is that. I don't, I don't want no relationship with a woman, and I don't want a woman to lay up with me 24-7, you know, yapping her fucking mouth off. But let's be real here. I like the company of a woman. When I like to hang out with women to go out and do things. I don't just look at women as, oh, all I want from you is pussy. I actually like female companionship. I just don't want her to be around me 24 fucking 7. I don't want to see the bitch the next day. Like, I got a girl that's coming over here today at 4 o'clock. I'm looking forward to seeing her. And no, I'm not just going to go back there and fuck the shit out and send her home. I'm actually looking forward to spending time with her. Now, do I want to spend time with her tomorrow, too? Fuck no. Today is her day. I'll hang with her today. <laughs> I'll hang with her today. We'll have some drinks. Uh, we might go out and get something to eat. I've been fucking with her over a year. So I'm actually looking forward to spending, you know, kicking it with her. I don't just look at her as something... <laughs> A, a vessel to fuck. You see what I'm saying? So I wanted to make that clear too that when I'm dealing with women, I do enjoy the companionship of a female that I don't just want to fuck. I don't want a relationship and I don't want the bitch yapping in my ear 24 7. But what I do, like if I got a girl on Saturday night, I don't just want to fuck her. I do want to go out and do some activities, go dance and go to the jazz club. I'm talking about a girl that I'm regularly dating now, not, not some girl I just met on the first day. I'm talking about one of my bitches that I'm regularly dating. I done worked hard all week. I want to go out and do something. I want to go out and have some drinks, uh, do something. I want to do some fucking activities. And so I don't just, when I, you know, it comes across like I just want to fuck. That's why, you know, I, I want to make that abundantly clear that I don't just look at women as vessels to fuck, that I do enjoy female companionship. So if, I guess if all you do want to fuck and you don't want to spend none of your non-sexual attention, I don't want to sit and chit-chat with a bitch on the phone for three hours. I don't want to oh, do that. that. But okay. I, well, I that, that, okay, go ahead. Let me just say something real quick. Uh, here's my here's whose side I'm gonna take. I oh, Shay just froze. Oh, Shay, you there? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm back. My, my, I didn't pay my internet. I think uh, the white man has hold me back. Okay. Uh, can you guys hear me? <laughs> I just want to yeah, say this before Alan responds. Um, I think that uh, for Alan, I think that I don't, I, I don't think like, like the, 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 the game has changed so much that uh, women are going to be like blase, blase. I think that women are susceptible to multiple different approaches. Yes, absolutely. I, 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 th I think that also it goes into the, the mentality of the person. I, I can say that about NegroMinistry.com because when I talked to Alan at first, I said, is this going to work? He said, I don't know. You know, But it's, it's, it's the mentality of the man who's doing the approach is going to his, whatever he's believing in, that system is going to work. I don't think that it's outdated because obviously it can't no, be outdated. Not even close. He's speaking <laughs> the same, you know, speaking that you're saying, Listen, I, I, like, but I see some people in the chat saying it's outdated. It's definitely not outdated. If you got the balls to do it, I think it's highly effective. If you are, you know, what a woman thinks is attractive and other intangibles, I just think it's a little bit more convoluted, maybe, if that's the right well, word, that some guys understand it. Listen, see, here, here's here's my, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Here's the thing, guys. Make no mistake. Mode one absolutely works. Like, there's okay. no mistake in that. We got people paying, we got people paying ARC four figures. Ain't nobody paying me four figures for my advice. Mode one absolutely works. And here's the thing. It also depends on the woman. If a woman is a slut who happens to be initially attracted to you, guess what? The mode one of works, it, that, that approach works like a charm. And guess what? That situation happens a lot. But yeah. women who are worth having around for a little while won't respond to the mode one approach, even mm -hmm. if she's attracted mm -hmm. to you, because she wants you to see that she isn't a slut. She wants you to see that she isn't an easy fuck. She wants you to see that she has more to offer than sex. So the mode one approach, as far as I'm concerned, the mode one approach to me is solid gold because that helps you distinguish the difference between the women that you're just going to use as fuck buddies and potential companions for later on down the road. Let me just answer real quick, okay? Because okay? Alan, I think I think so you gotta let me so. uh, Just real quick, because <laughs> I think what you're saying is okay, Alan. You are what most people in the black community would consider a, a conventionally, uh, you know, guy that's a handsome or something like that. I think to AMS's point is okay. If what if you're a guy that is not what women find very, very sexually attractive, then how powerful is mode one to, to, you know what I mean? I, I think that's what like, I'm saying. Alan, listen, Alan's spoiled, man. Like, dude, yeah, like, I mean, I'm like, like Alan's, you know, always, Alan's always had game. I agree with that too, too, Alan. I, I agree with that too. I, 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 I've, I've, I've come down on you about that too. And as others <laughs> that I think to the certain degree, if you're ugly nigga like me, more one, you know, I don't well, know. Now, I guess, I guess I why the audience, I saw, I'm, I, I look in the chat room here and there, and somebody like Harley said, ooh, Alan, and they get the Alan mad. It's not that I'm mad on anybody on the panel, but I, yeah, number one, what uh, Donald just said, I'm passionate, but yeah. almost every, I can literally say every challenge that anybody can throw against Mo One, I've heard it like probably a hundred times each. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there's not, there's nothing new. And so, Here's what people miss, and you you know my what, what's my nickname that that's used in my marketing? The king of the verbal king seduction. Of verbal seduction. Okay. okay. See, this is what a lot of guys overlook or underestimate. Man, is the is what they call in the hood your mouthpiece. If you got an average to less than average mouthpiece, then. Then just about everything Donovan and AMS said is highly valid. Okay. That's when even I would agree and say everything they're saying is highly valid. But if you have been trained, like I train guys to become a master verbal seducer, mm -hmm. you can overcome all that plausible deniability bullshit. Trust me when I say this. And again, and this is where me and Steve fell out. Steve, the Dean Williams, had tried to, in a podcast with you, actually, O'Shea, he tried to say that Mo One only worked on slutty bitches. I guarantee you if I was to out some women, out some women big time, including some celebrities, y'all would say, oh, shit, you fucked her? God damn her? I fuck some women who are considered the most goody of good girls, the most prudish of church going women, women who are considered who, who other men. There are women who are married today, who are literally right now have a husband, two kids, that everybody who knows them thinks they're the most prim, proper, good girl in the world. But guess who fucked them less than 24 hours after they met him, who was talking a bunch of X-rated shit in their ear? Alan Roger Curry. 
because I'm a master verbal seducer. You got to have verbal seduction skills to overcome the plausible deniability factor. And Here's when you the- have that, when you have top notch verbal seduction skills, yes, you can get away in your initial. Per- and let me tell you this quick story. I'm not going to make it too long, but I've told this story a couple times on my blog, talk radio and on my YouTube okay. that, that, uh, that uh, illustrates, I think, a lot of my points. There was a guy, I forget what country. He's not United States, so it's a European country. He, he lives in a loft, well, at the time, he was living in a loft with a good friend of his. And his loft buddy said, invite him to go to the club to meet some women and bring him back to the loft. He said, nah, I really don't go, I wanna go. And they ended up actually getting into an argument about my book. His, his buddy was like, oh, so you, now that you read this more one, you don't believe in going to clubs or more and shit, huh? And he's like, nah, man, a bunch of manipulative time wasters there. So anyway, him and another friend of theirs go to the club. They bring back these two hot women and they take them in the main living space of of the loft and they like entertaining these chicks, talking to them, had them chicks laughing and smiling and just. So about an hour into the conversation, no, the first thing happened, the guy who read my books told his loft buddy, he said, hey man, why are you and your buddy doing all that small talk? And they were like, man, because we're gentlemen, man. We don't just go up to women and say, hey, I want to fuck you. Like this Alan Ranch Curry guy, you know, we want to fuck that, man. We're gentlemen. We know how to smooth our way into a woman's man. And the guy read my book was like, okay. So he heard him, kept talking and talking. Then one woman came and knocked on his door looking for the bathroom. And he said, yeah, the bathroom's right over there. By the way, you know, you're pretty hot. You need to come in my room before the night over. And she said, why would I want to come to your room? He said, among other reasons, I can bang the shit out of you. And she said, what? What did you say? I can't believe you said that. You know, the blah, blah, blah. So she went back and told his mate. His flatmate came back to him, chastised him, said, man, I told you about that more one shit. Again, so if the story stopped right there, most guys would be like, see, I told you that more one shit don't work. I told you that more one shit don't work. But here's how the story unfolded. His mate and their other friend kept entertaining these women for another hour again. It was a great conversation. These women was laughing and shit. Then, but then when they were, the two women was ready to go, they called a cab. And the guys was like, oh, so you guys not willing to stay? You guys stay? They're like, yeah, you know, we got to get back. And then before they were about to go, the woman said, what's your, your flatmate's name again? And he was like, why do you want to know his name? Well, he spoke to me when I went to the bathroom. I just wanted to say a word with him. She, he heard her say that outside his door. She knocked on his door, and I forget the comments they exchange. Then they, the two women left where they, they thought they left. Then one of the two chicks, the one who knocked on his door, came back. His flatmate thought she was coming back for him. Guess whose fucking room she went in? Guess whose fucking room she went in? Did she go in the room with the motherfucker that spent two and a half, almost three hours kitchen with a fucking ass? Fuck no. The motherfucker that all he said to her was, you're hot, and if it tickles your fancy to come in my room, I would love for you to do so so I can bang the shit out of you. He ended up fucking that bitch. He ended up fucking that bitch, man. He didn't do no small talking. He didn't give that bitch no plausible deniability. He was straight up with this bitch. He didn't waste time with none of that shit. And she fucked him, man. She fucked him. And that's what made his flat believer, his flatmate a believer. As he said, the good news was after that, his flatmate became a believer. Mo, he was like, God damn, I can't believe you fucked this chick. And you only talked to her for like all of five minutes. Okay, let's let's go to Donovan. Listen, listen, and listen, I'll, listen, I'll, I'll, listen I'll, put a, I'll, I'll put a bow on this and then I'll answer Stefan's question here. Uh, okay. Stefan DeMarcus uh, Clink Stales. The, th- the deal is this. Um, Alan Roger Curry is 100% correct. But but again, there's a caveat to that. Most men aren't verbal seductors. Most men are not Alan Roger Curry. Most men aren't AMS. Most men aren't Donovan Sharp. Okay. Mode one is mode one is next level game. It's next right. level game and it's for men, it's for high status men. Rich men, men of means, men who have men who have that automatic confidence and swagger. But for the rest of us, like I said, we got to start somewhere. This is why you have to use this approach. And then when you get good enough with women, yeah, then you can start walking up to women and be like, yo, I'm trying to fuck the shit at you. Room 112 where the players do you know, what it do, right? At that point, mo- the mode one approach works. So again, I mean, all credit goes to ARC. He's got dudes paying him four figures for his shit. I don't have anybody stroking checks for that much. As far as Stefan's uh, initial statement about, listen, if you work out and 
build your social status, then you can just wait for the women come to come to you. It really depends upon your situation. A guy that was in the chat earlier said, listen, I'm married or I travel a lot. You don't have time. You don't have time to approach women and strike right. up conversation like that. But here's the thing. The whole let women come to me. No disrespect on this on Stefan, but that's lazy. OK, when you tell people that I'm going to wait for women co to come to me. You you are insulating yourself from rejection. You are not putting your you're not putting your balls on the line. Listen, we know AMS said it earlier. Women don't handle rejection well at all, so they're not going to go out and approach men. They're fr dude. Their egos as 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 confident as women seem on air and on TV and on social media. Man, their 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 egos are like a balloon to a fucking pin. All it takes is one little <laughs> tinge of rejection. And their whole world comes crashing down around them. They they start talking shit and all this other kind of stuff. The thing is is don't ask for and don't ask for a woman's number if if you don't if you're not picking up those choosing signals if if you don't think she's attractive to you. Again, I make women qualify themselves to me because I'm not thirsty. And here's the thing: I had to have that luxury. It wasn't always like that. Right. I when I was in Vegas, I had the luxury of rejecting women because I was already fucking other girls down in Vegas. Of course, I don't make you qualify yourself to me because I got three of you back at the crib, right? right? I now have the luxury of rejecting women because I'm in a relationship with an attractive woman who gives me pussy on command. Waiting for women to approach me to me, and again, no disrespect for Stefan, because that nigga isn't, he's in great shape. He's like negative 2% body fat. But to me, that's, <laughs> I'm, sorry, man, I'm serious. But to me, when, when a man says, hey, I just wait for them to go to, to come to me, that is code for, I'm afraid to approach. Again, no, no disrespect because rejection is hard. Game is hard. Setting yourself apart from men when women get scores of offers from men everywhere, online, in person, it's hard. But that's why it pays dividends. Nothing, listen, nothing worth having like, like a bunch of hot women to fuck with is easy. So if you wait for women to come to you, guess what women are going to come to you? Those 300-pound ass wildebeest who are going to throw themselves to you and be like, yo, nigga, I'm going to work that thick bitch. I know you will. You're 300 fucking pounds. Like, that's how that works. Gentlemen, there is a cost. There, listen, there's a cost to sleeping with pretty women, and that cost is not letting women come to you. Right. Hey, O'Shea, hey, I'm going to make down. this deal with you. I'm going to make this deal with you. If you let me say this final piece, I will shut up for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll shut up for the next. No, because I saw somebody in the chat room saying, you know, damn, Alan, I like Alan, but one minute, man, he is kind of he is kind of dominating the conversation. So I'm gonna just say this thing. Oh fuck. What you there? You there? Uh-oh, one of his side, listen, one of his side bitches is hitting him right now. Uh-oh, uh oh. Now he got the prison photo up. The prison photo up. Are you stupid? <laughs> <laughs> that inmate photo on it, like stupid as hell, man. Arrested for stealing text messages. All right, while he's doing that, Alpha Male strategy, go ahead and, and weigh in on it, man. Let me add it because I want to make the abundant clear. I'm not trying to uh, tear down what Allen done built with his mold one brand. I, I want to okay. make that clear to the guys right now. I'm not trying to. I'm not up here to tell guys Allen shit don't work and try to if guys take from this that his mold one brand is bullshit. I, I'm, I want to make that abundantly clear Good. that. Mold one can and will work, guys. I'm gonna say that point blank. I all I'm saying against mold one is that you're gonna leave a lot of ass on the table. If you walk up to 20 women and you went up to them with mold one, I guarantee you, yes, you're gonna fuck a couple of those women with the mold one approach. Ain't no, I, I'm not gonna deny that. Well, all I'm saying is because I don't want guys to get the misperception that I'm trying to tell another man's brand down is that you probably gonna leave about five or six other women you could have fucked on the table. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, O'Shea. I want to make that okay. abundantly clear. Well, let me ask you, dog, again, since I got you here. When can I get another interview, dog? I, oh, you stupid. Put them on the spot. I'm just saying, you know, I, I can't get a date for the email. I'm just since I got you right now. I'm just saying, hey, when can oh, I get you back? Hey, I, I, you know, I'm gonna do it, man. My, my thing being, man, my oh, thing shit. is, man, guys ought to pay me for my, my game, man. And, and you don't even see me on my channel no more that hardly much do it. Because I'm like, I done gave enough free content away, man. I, I got 150 videos, something like that, on YouTube. Okay, and, hell and yeah. Shit like, and, and so I'm like, man, you know, I, you know, I gotta be a businessman. And so even now, I see guys all the time. I'm taking notes. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. Okay, you, we'll, you, I mean, we'll talk about that, man. You know, I, you know, this is over here, at O'Shea King Productions, dog. Come on, man. You, that's what we do. I get you, man. I get you. That's not, that's not my only thing. It ain't nothing against you. It, you see, I don't even build my own channel. It's, it's I know, I know, reason. I know, I know. It's for that reason. Listen. I'm like, the guys don't want to pay five dollars a month, man, to learn from me. Then I feel like, why, you know, what's what's what I'm doing? You know, what I'm saying if they won't pay five dollars a month. That's all I'm charging on my Patreon. And so it ain't nothing against you. It's like 
guys, if I do the interview, it's gonna be seven, eight hundred people watching. Right. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. and, and you ain't got seven, eight hundred patrons. So that don't that that don't that don't I don't, yeah, that, I don't understand. Compute. that don't compute. And you see what I'm saying? So hey, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Subscribe to AMS, man. Don't be a cheap ass nigga. Reach yeah, in, reach yeah. in your pockets. Oh shit! Allen came back on yeah, another dude, channel. Yo, <laughs> yo, look. Allen looks like he's in another location. I know. He looks like he's in another location, bro. Nigga teleport. Hey, no, can listen, you listen. Seriously though, I agree. I agree with. I agree with AMX. With AMS. The thing is, this man, five dollars a month is it's not much. That's less than seventeen cents a day. Right. And listen, <laughs> and, and listen, man, listen. Pledging five dollars a month that that's not easy for a lot of guys. But again, just like AMS says, man, like there's a lot of free content out there. We put out a lot of free content. Now I'm on my website because I have to be. I got kicked off of YouTube, but obviously right. the guy knows what he's talking about. Just come up off of five dollars from us. We got people in here do doing twenty, thirty, fifty dollars in super chats, dude. Go the do the easy thing and pledge five dollars a month on Patreon, and you're good to go. You get all the game you want. Yeah, and I, guys, I'm Patreon to everybody on the uh, on the panel. Like Alpha I said, the Negro Manosphere. That's right. Alpha Male Strategies, dog. Listen. I made a video. You made me eat my words. Like, uh, I'll have to say Alan Roger Curry to a certain extent because I was like, man, you got all them subscribers, but ain't nobody paying you. And uh, shit, I mean, damn, you damn near at 2,000. I mean, if I had 2,000 uh, Patreon uh, members, shit, we would have that convention in six months. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but nigga, I'm like, let me just check what he got. Hold on one second. I got to uh, just look real quick. There's something I wanted to ask. Um, uh, there's yeah, something I wanted to ask. Okay. Here. Maybe Can that is a word. That? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. My thing now. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Cause because that is it's one before my phone went out. That's why I okay. ended up. Oh, we phone. thought we we thought we thought somebody broke into here. We thought one of these one of these uh, big booty bitches came in to <laughs> see what's going on. What AR what ARC is fucking other bitches? Fuck that nigga. He got to go. <laughs> oh, somebody said I just That's came a Patreon of Donovan. Good content, bro. Okay, shout out to appreciate it, Yeah, he hit me on. Uh, yeah, he hit me. Yeah. All right, go 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 ahead. Uh, uh um. but it was just some because Donovan said something to the fact that you got to have means. No, I disagree with that. So I'm gonna tell you what you what what some common myths associated with Mo One. You don't have to be exceptionally good looking to make Mo One look. I've heard guys say, oh, Mo One only works for real good looking guys. That's no, that's not what I said. I didn't say you said it. I'm saying okay. guys okay. in general will say that. Okay. Another thing guys will say in general, Mo One only causes you to sleep with real slutty chicks. That's bullshit. Uh, you got to have money to be Mo One. That's bullshit. Matter of fact, some of my greatest years being Mo One was when I was fucking broke and unemployed. Um, now the one thing Donovan said that's true about Mo One, there's two th components you could say you, you have to have for Mo One to work. You got to be ballsy than a motherfucker. If you ain't ballsy, no, Mo One ain't gonna work for you. If no you, approach is gonna work for you. Timidity in your voice, hesitancy in your voice, it ain't gonna work for you. So you got to be a balls out, confident type motherfucker to make Mo One work, and that's part of what I do in my training with guys. And the second thing is also along the lines of verbal delivery, you got to learn how to have a, what I call a smooth, seductive, persuasively charming manner of verbal expression. If anything about your verbal expression is kind of dorky, awkward, corny, Mo mm -hmm. one ain't gonna really work for you. And believe it or not, you can listen to my voice. I used to be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, come on, man. Like, this is how it is. This is how it is. We all get here in different ways. Because okay. talking, being able to talk dirty to women, I ain't going to say it's an absolute mandatory requirement, but that's when you're able to take more one to the highest level is when you know how to just get a woman's pussy wet just by the way you talk to her. That, but right, I, listen, I agree with you, but that does take work. It doesn't just, and this is why you're training people to do this. It doesn't, well, it doesn't just come to me. people. And I train guys because you're right. No guy is just gonna read my books, say on Monday evening, and on Tuesday afternoon, he's gonna be like, oh shit, I'm just gonna be slaying bitches left here. It don't work that right. way. So listen, and some men, you got to understand this too. Some men are just naturals. Like you, I don't know. Like, I remember I asked you, when did you find the red pill? You like, I didn't find the red pill. The red pill found me. Like I've, I've always known this shit. Very, very few men. There are very, there are a finite number of men who just automatically have verbal seduction skills. You happen, it appears you happen to be one of those men, but the vast majority of us, we got here the hard way. 
and well, also well. he he knows how to explain it too. Like that's the thing. Like some guys who are like pimps or some guys who are like really good at certain things can't necessarily express. Yeah, they can't teach. Like Michael Jordan. Like it. Michael Jordan, one of the greatest players ever. He he couldn't coach. Magic yeah. Johnson tried to coach. I think he was fired after but fight after what ten games with the L.A. Lakers. This is because as a player, just because you know how to play doesn't mean you know how to coach. It's the same thing. Yeah. ARC it's can true. listen. He's Magic Johnson who can also coach. That's you know listen. That's a valuable commodity to the tune of four figures in Miami on a Sunday. <laughs> okay, let me let me just real. That's the alpha male strategy. Uh, do you want to weigh in on anything else also? Yeah, yeah. I think a, a big thing that I think happens with um, Allen Roger Curry is that he thinks you know he's a natural. I think he's a natural with women, and I think that he thinks that that's going to be easily passed on. Now I've seen Hakeem Olajuwon try to teach. I don't know how many guys to do his post moves and I the dream shake. That. Yeah, yeah, the dream work. shake. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I've seen nobody been able to duplicate it. So many guys that came and talked to him and worked with him in the off season, and yet nobody looks anything remotely like Hakeem Olajuwon did in the low post. It's some things that just come natural to you that I don't think that you can just teach other people. You see what I'm saying? Right. Well, I, I, I would say I half agree with that, uh, Alpha Mistrage, but I have disagree with that. I would agree that. In terms of you're talking about just the masses in general, I'll, I'll be the first. And I said that actually, though, from day one. I, matter of fact, my brother, even more so than me, he would tell guys when guys were coming to me for advice back in the late 90s, he would say, Mo one is not for everybody. That was his key phrase. He would say, Mo one works, but it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. So, in that regard, I agree with AMS. But that said, if I was to reveal the identities, of my some of my clients, or even just at minimum, show you pictures of them. You would probably look at some of my clients and be like, "Oh no, nah, that dude ain't no way he gonna have more one work for him." And it has worked for him. Like I've taken guys who just on physical appearance look nerdy or semi nerdy, or just look the average looking. They didn't have a great physique or a super handsome face, but they've written me testimonials where they like, "Dude, Alan, man." Before you, man, I was striking out left and right, man, and now I'm just having success like a mother. Or I've also had guys who are already at a decent level, like to Donovan's point earlier when he said he thinks more one will help take guys who already got some degree of game to an even higher level. I have a lot of testimonies along those lines where guys say, yeah, Alan, I wasn't like no loser before I came you out. I was getting my share of pussy. Right, but right. now that I've worked with you, man, my shit is like off the chain now, man. Like I'm having threesomes now I never had before. Like I highlighted on my YouTube channel. I can't reveal his name for confidential purposes, but there's this guy. He's like a B-list actor in Hollywood. He fucked this A-list actress that if I said her name, y'all would be like, what? He not only fucked her because of my advice, he had a threesome with her and one of her girlfriends because of my who said again advice. So it's helped it's helped some guys start from ground zero and move up, and it's helped a lot of guys that were already had decent game. It helped project them to the next level. Okay. Um, I got to uh, yeah, oh, yeah, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah, what's going before we go down? What'd you say, Alpha? Uh, you know, let's that, 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 change the subject because I just feel like this feels like two brothers trying to tell another brother brand down, and I don't, I don't like. I don't like the feel of it. It seems like it's two. It's two guys. It seems like it seems like it's two brothers on here trying to tell another guy brand down. So like you know. Yeah, that's not my intention. If it, I, I, I no, understand, it, it look that it, way. It but, ain't that, but I think yeah. people it could come. It could come across as that. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I agree. Okay. Uh, okay. Actually, I'll change the subject right now. Um, let, let, let's let's address let's address a hater in the comments here. <laughs> uh, we got listen. We got this nigga G Spirit talking about sharp get white privilege for having a white voice. <laughs> the nigga can seduce barbecue Becky. LOL, nigga, that's cute, right? Like I got niggas all the time calling me Carlton, right? Calling me a whitewash. That's nigga. That's cool. Again. This is this is the equivalent of these low level MGTOW ass niggas down in their mom's basement, fat ass niggas who can't fuck shit, telling me that oh you're a slave to the pussy. Nah, nigga, <laughs> you tell me I'm a slave to the pussy because you can't get pussy. You make fun of the way I sound because you don't sound like me. You make fun of me because you want to be me. This guy says also so Donovan Sharp in short is saying that mode one wouldn't work because he doesn't have the confidence or the verbal skills. Plain and simple, that's real cute. Do I look like someone who isn't confident? Do I look like someone who doesn't have verbal skills? I rest my case. 
Let me let me I just yeah, put this yeah, on the on the on the last thing for the I know it's, it's been a kind of a long show, but I want to know this as all as dating coaches mm-hmm. uh, for your clients respectively. We got you know I have an all black male audience. I know alpha male strategies. You I think you have a more of a m- multicultural audience than I do. But I think yeah. that you get more of an urban audience also. Yeah. Um, and and like Alan Roger Curry, I would probably say he has probably more from more of a white collar. I'm not I'm saying, but I may have more a Caucasian audience than than anything else. Maybe is that right, Alan? More of a Caucasian audience than yeah. Audience? I have, uh, well, I have a very mixed mixed group. audience. Okay, but percentage wise, yes, I would say my highest percentage of clients are Caucasian. My okay. second is Asian. Okay. Okay. And blacks mm-hmm. probably be the third, no lower than fourth. Okay, so here's what I want to know because before this whole, you know what I mean, black, you know, kind of like manosphere was kind of burgeoning and, 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 and getting into the dating thing. Um, there wasn't even like this discussion wasn't even happening like black dating coaching, like you know, Alan Roger Curry, you know, Donovan, but distinctly toward especially alpha male strategies. He actually took it to another another market that we didn't even think was there. But this is what I want to know. A lot of brothers want to understand like the dating advice you guys give. Is it going to work better with black women more often? Or do you have to cater your game towards black women more? Or is the game uh, of approaching whatever you, you teach or methods, irrespective of what it is, does it work better with black women or with white women or something like that? So I want to start with, um, let's start with alpha male strategies first, since he's talked the least. And let's just say, see what, what he would have to say. What were your clients saying? My thing is, I think women are women. Okay. But I do, I'm, I'm not going to lie and tell you, I, in my opinion, you know, my opinion, I do think uh, black women are more masculine. So you have to be more masculine than them. So I, I, I really think that you have to be a real man to deal with black women. That's just that's, that's my I, listen. I train female white clients and I train female black clients. And I'm telling you, I have a harder time to get the black women to go along with the program than the white women. The white women are just OK. OK. The black yep. women are like, they resist a little bit more to where I have to put the hammer down a little bit more and be more masculine with them. Like they try me more. They test, they test constantly. Like, I don't feel like doing those today. Like they test just a whole lot more. So if if you, if, 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 in my opinion, with the black women, you definitely got to be a man's man. I don't, I don't think black women are hard to deal with as long as you know how to be a man with them. And I and I tell guys that all the time because I'm only attracted to black women. You know, I don't I don't date white women. I don't date other women. I only date black women, and I have an easy time dealing with black women. Well, that's because I'm always masculine, and I always have a take it or leave it attitude. Ain't no pussy in me. So it's either gonna be my way or I can walk. All right. Okay. So that's my thing with that. And a lot of guys they have a harder time dealing with black women because they don't have that abundance mindset. Mm-hmm. They try to tolerate the bullshit to get a piece of right. ass. I have a very abundance mindset, so I always can walk. Women can respect that. The girl that I got coming over today at 4, 430, she has tried, tried. She's from Canada. I don't know if you know anything about Canada. It's very feminized. And yes. so she, and she, even her mother is very feminized, runs her daddy around. And, and she have tried that with me. It don't work with me. I'm a man's man. She going to go my way or you can walk. All right. Now, I didn't even know Canada was feminized like that. She told me so because I, I, you know, I haven't been to Canada. She told me that all the women up there run the household. Well, you're in America now, honey, and you're dealing with a man's man. And that bullshit don't work down here. So I don't think with only thing with dealing with black women is you got to mean what you say and say what you mean. And that's it. Okay. And be willing to walk away if it don't go your way. All right. But guys, but guys have this scarcity mindset. They ain't mm-hmm. had no pussy in two months. <laughs> and so they get to goddamn kissing ass, shucking and driving, and all this bullshit. Yep. And this, this is, is again, this is again the professional sports teams dealing with headaches and malcontents, right? Everyone yeah. always asks, why does Tio get keep getting signed by teams? He's a locker room cancer. Well, because there are o- there was only one Tio. There right. weren't there weren't a bunch of Tos running around the league. If there were eighteen Tos in the NFL, then guess what? The original Tio wouldn't have been shit. But because teams don't have that abundance mentality, because they understood that they couldn't just go out and get another Terrell Owens, they dealt with the bullshit. They dealt with the bullshit in order to get T.O. and ended up getting burned by T.O., just like men. Okay, okay. So, Donna, before I let you respond, uh, uh, Alvin Mosher, unless you're done, are you, 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 you want to no, no, All right, Alvin, Donovan, please do not send this to Patreon. 
Okay, <laughs> we, we say about black women, don't don't do that. This is our, I hate no, to I take think, it down, man. No, no, that's cool. That's cool. No, let's, listen, let's this be, is uh, you know. Let's no, be, I understand. This is yeah. this is real simple. AMS is one hundred percent correct. Okay. Um, all women really are the same. The, um, and, and women of different cultures, different races, different skin tone. The hardware is different, okay? But yeah. but the software is the same. Now, some software you have to use a little stronger antivirus with, right? Black women are a little bit more masculine. And okay. because they're a little bit more masculine, you have to show that hyper-masculinity. Mm -hmm. A guy like myself, I'm not, uh, listen, I'm not trying to deal with that. Does that make me weak? No, okay? People, a, a lot of black women always hit me in the comments and say, well, you just can't handle a strong black woman. Well, listen, you could probably handle a bratty kid. That doesn't mean you want to. OK, so it's it, the same goes both ways. I would agree. Hyper masculinity works on all women. So if you have if you if you are hyper masculine, if you have that if you have that abundance mentality, listen, that game is going to work on women from sea to shining sea, regardless of race, color, creed, religion, et cetera, et cetera. Feminism is one giant shit test. And the answer to the shit test is masculinity. If, well, I don't want to do this today. I remember one girl, just a quick story. I had just gotten her number and I said, hey, you know, let's go to, this was back when I was asking girls to the movies. She's, I was like, hey, let's go to the movies. And she's like, all right, well, I think I'm going to be sick this week. And I was like, well, listen, I'm going to the movies anyway. You know, I guess I'll catch you on the other side, blah, 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 blah. A day later, she says, you know what? I think I'm feeling better. Let's go to the movies. That's the abundance mentality. You have to let women know that you can and will walk away if need to, because if a woman doesn't know that you can walk right out the door for whatever reason you deem necessary, you have lost her respect. And if a woman doesn't respect you, she does not respect your time. Right. So you have to, again, you have to build a woman's respect. She has to respect your time. If you're all the time, if you are acquiescing to a woman all the time, well, okay, well, I'm busy this weekend. Okay, well, how about we do it on Friday or Saturday? They're going to think this nigga has got nothing going on for him. So yeah. when I actually do get with this nigga, I'm not going to respect his time. Donovan, why do women flake on me? It's the same reason she doesn't respect your time. Mm -hmm. And in order to get a woman to respect your time, you have to have an abundance mindset. No, you don't verbally tell a woman, yes, my time is valuable to me and I have other women. No, it reflects in your actions and the way you respond. That's yeah. how that works. Yeah. Women respect the men that women respect men that could do without them. A woman doesn't women don't want to complete a man. OK, right. if you ever say to a woman, you complete me, she's like, no. I wanted a train to ride. I don't want to be the pilot. Women don't even want to be the co-pilot. They want to be a passenger. They want you to be the captain. They listen, they want to be on your program. If you show her that if you show her, listen, you can either get this train is leaving the station with or without you. If you if you tell a woman that directly or indirectly, again, she's gonna acquiesce to you rather than you acquiescing to her. Okay, okay. And so let, let me do this. And guys, thanks. Uh a brother just donated diggity. He goes uh 20 bucks. Thank you so much. Um, and then there's a question about online dating. Uh, D Della, thank you so much. Um, let's let's go to the Alpha. Uh, let's go to Alan Roger Curry. Uh, do you think that it's different? You know, giving dating advice is there is there a different kind of approach you need with black women than, than non black women? Yes and no. In general, I think women are women, man. They got a pussy that gets wet. And here's how I look at women, man. And really, human beings. Period. Women at their core are, are essentially the same. It, what, what separates the women, and you always hear me plug these two words, I plugged them early in this conversation, social programming. Different women have different layers of different types of social programming. And, and for those listening, maybe may be like, okay, what does that mean when he says that? I define social programming as the collective sum of all the beliefs you've accumulated over the years, all the attitudes you've accumulated over the years, all the fears and insecurities you've accumulated over the years. And that plays into how you present yourself to other people in public. So most women, they've been socialized starting with their mother, stepmother, father, stepfather. They get certain social programming ingrained on them on how to present themselves to men. So Different women who come from different areas, different countries, different cultures, they have different social programming. So let's highlight black women. Black women, some of their social programming, depending on their background, it might range for if they're on the lower end of the social economic scale or the higher end. The ones, I hate to generalize, but more on the lower end, they get socialized to always be tough. Then people tell them, life is a bitch, life is hard, you can't. So any signs of vulnerability, 
So you, they, a lot of these black women go out there, they like, yeah, I ain't gonna let nobody pump me. I'm a strong bitch. I'm a short girl, I'm a strong bitch. <laughs> but see, I know from my experience, as you know, Shay, one of my things, I, I'm into the BDSM lifestyle. Right. Women pay me, including black women, pay me. What's in chains, niggas? And I've seen sisters present me initially with the toughest exterior in the world. And then either minutes later, hours later, days later, I had those women exhibiting the most feminine, submissive behavior possible. What did I do? I cut through all their social programming. So what Alpha Male Strategies was saying earlier is all, and I actually been saying that too for years. Black women, and this is a loose generalization, but you could say comparatively speaking, well, I have, I've gotten some challenges on this from some guys in, in South America because they say a lot of the Hispanic women are the same way. They're going to challenge your masculinity, man, because they want to see how you're a punk. If they and that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. Punk in you, they, their attitude is either I ain't going to fuck you, period, or I'm only going to fuck you if I can use the shit out of you for the money you got. But if you're talking about a woman give you some pussy for free, like without you spending big bucks on her, she got to know that you like alpha male times 10. Like you will get the strongest backbone in the world. So like if guys listen to my audio book, who said again, my verbal seduction story number one is probably the best story in there that typifies that. The, the cliff notes of that story, I was on a triple date with two friends and they had me play. Initially, I was supposed to be the, the wingman who was supposed to take one for the team. They said they was going to get pussy. They told me, you ain't going to get no pussy. It was the, the younger cousin of one of the other women's date, other, one of the other guys' dates. And man, for the first hour, hour and 15 minutes of this triple date, man, this babe was a straight up bitch. Think of like a loud talking, smart mall sister. Like the type of sister, that was, if she was in a theater with you, you'd be like, damn, I wish that bitch shut up. She was that type of sister. Just, just like hooks. I ain't going to say total hood. She's probably like two thirds hood, one third middle class maybe. But she was just a bitch. And it wasn't, matter of fact, my speech at the 21 convention included this story. Because I said, every man needs a turning point. And I said, my main turning point, you said one instant, if I had to point to one instant that turned was my turning point to uh, my mole one trajectory was this one incident. Because what happened, she was acting like a bitch. I got so frustrated. I walked out the apartment and I was mumbling to myself. I was like, God damn, this bitch get on my nerve. And she came out and started taunting me. She had an insult. She had always pissed me off about being a bitch, but she came outside and followed me. She was like, oh, it's baby Pouton. It's poor baby Ellen Pouton. Now, see, speaking of social program, up to this point, I came, oh, shit, you know my parents' background. You know, my father, both my parents were college educated. You know, I came from, I wasn't like, you know, from the hood type brother. Right. I had the social program. My mother had always instilled in me, you know, be a polite gentleman. You know, basically, without getting linked, to be the nice guy. And for the most part, that's what I was before this incident. I had never cursed in a woman to her face and said nothing. But that moment when she taunted me, I turned around, looked at dinner, I said, bitch, shut the fuck up. And she said, excuse me? And I pointed this out, 20 Winkie, bitch. I said, when women say excuse me, what they're saying in their own language are, is to you, are you really a man to tell me that? Or are you pretending to be a man right now? And they're going to watch what your reaction is. Because if you back down in any way, you're dead meat. So I stepped right into her. I looked even more into her eyes. I said, you heard what I said, bitch. I said, bitch, shut the fuck up. You got two options for the rest of the night. You're going to suck my dick or you're going to shut the fuck up. And she just looked at me. And I wish I had it on video. It was almost magical, and I'm not even joking. Her whole demeanor in a matter of like five to 10 seconds switched. She went from this hard ass, smart talk, smart elegy sister, and all of a sudden she was like, Alan, you tripping, you tripping. Yeah, every yeah, black every woman black has woman that hood rat in them. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on down. And I said, I said, where's your car so you can suck my dick? Her, for the rest of the night, her whole voice was real soft, it was feminine. She started calling me sir the rest of the night. Everything I told her, she would say, yes, sir. Yes. To the point where one of my friends, I described this in the story in my book, man, they thought I had literally either one or two days. They thought I had gotten her drunk. Or one of my friends actually thought I had literally hypnotized. He said, dude, did you hypnotize that bitch? He said, no. He 
said, dude, it's like she's a totally different woman, man. She was when she was in here before y'all went outside, man. She was a straight up bitch. Now she's acting like your personal sex slave, man. What do you do? What the fuck did you do to her outside? And in a nutshell, man, I just demonstrated my masculinity. And so I'm not saying anything different than what Alpha Male Strategies and Donovan said before me is that yeah, man, when when women, really women in general, I would say you got to demonstrate that you're a fucking man. But I would say with black women, multiply that times two, times three, even times five, man. Because again, if they even see one or two percent punk in you, mm -hmm. you either yeah. ain't getting the pussy at all, or you only getting the pussy if you spend big money on it. Right. Okay. One hundred, Adam. I agree with that. Anybody want to respond yeah. to that particular? Yeah. Story? Listen, yeah. he's he's listen, he's right. Um, and and here's the thing: a lot of guys complain. Oh, Donovan, I hate it when women shit test me. This and that and the other. No, 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 no. Women don't shit test men they are not attracted to, okay? Mm. If she doesn't shit test you, she doesn't want to fuck you. The mm. reason she is shit testing Ooh. you in the first place is she's saying it to herself subconsciously, okay, I she's like the way he presents you. himself. That's right. exactly right. I, I like the way, listen, he looks good, he smells good, his game is tight, but let's see if he really is who he presents himself to be. And so she will shit test you. Mm. If you walk up on a woman and it's just too easy, oh yeah, sure, I'll meet you here and there, bruh, she's going to flake on you because she didn't test you. Right. Women, and, and you, you have to understand this women have to test you because it's the way they decide to fuck you or keep fucking you they have to it is an evolutionary necessity okay women a women's biological hard drive does not allow them to desire carrying the genes of weak males now women out there who are in the club they're not thinking about this consciously but that's all playing in their that's all playing in their background their hard drive which is why they fuck alpha males right it, that that's that evolutionary biology we shit test women by simply looking at them and maybe with a little bit of qualification. If you look good, if you're not a headache, if you might have some, if you might have a few redeeming qualities about yourself, we might keep you around. Women who don't shit test you are low value and probably sluts. A woman who doesn't shit test you but fucks you anyway, dude, she's fucked guys into the quadruple digits. You can bet on it. As far as black women are concerned, I agree with Alan. The culture tells black women that they have to be hyper-masculine to be attractive, and that's simply not the case. And the reason why they're so steadfast in their convictions is because we have some of the most influential black people telling women this, directly and indirectly. Oprah Winfrey, um, uh, Ian Levan Zant, Steve Harvey, bless his heart, funny motherfucker, but he does this too. Think like he's, a man. With the Me Too like right now too, by the way. Right, right, exactly. Well, yeah, that 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 doesn't surprise me. Most notably, <laughs> Tyler Perry. Right? Yeah. We've all seen the movies. Why did I get married? And why did I get married too? The woman who plays Angela, Tasha Smith, quite literally makes herself as insufferable as humanly possible to her to Michael Jai White, every black woman's object of desire. And what does he do? Instead of punishing her for her bad behavior, he gives her yet more conviction or more um, um, uh, more commitment. He gives her more, he rewards her for bad behavior. So what's happening in the black community is that we, we're having influential black figures telling women, hey, listen, be as difficult as possible and your man will take care of you. And one last word about submission. Black women think black women look at being submissive as being weak. No, a black man who is submissive is weak. What that is, is that is inver that is inverse juxtaposition based um, projection. OK. Just because just because you see us as weak doesn't mean we see you as weak, right? Yeah. If you're being be, being submissive doesn't make you weak, sisters. It makes you a woman. That's all there is to it. Okay. okay. Another thing to Go add ahead. to that point about uh, testing is anytime you're in a position of leadership and a man supposed to lead the relationship, but this goes on with my training clients. This goes on with any, if you have employees, people are going to test you for that leadership to see if you go if you can lead lead things in the right direction. Right. It, ain't, it ain't gotta just be women. If if I, I got employees that work for me for my security company, they test me from time to time. Now I put the hammer down because I know you know what they're doing, but anytime you're in a position of leadership, people are gonna test you to see if you're the correct leader for them. Be ready. Yeah, yeah. matter of fact, I want to add on to that along the same lines, and Iceberg Slim points this out in his book, and I'm, I just know it from my own experiences. One thing Iceberg Slim says, I think it's a yeah, pimp story of my life, for men who might naively think that a woman's just going to give you, say, one big test, and then if you pass, you know, you'll never be, no. Iceberg, I don't remember exact words, but in a nutshell, Iceberg Slim says, even when you're a pimp and you got a stable hose, he said, one thing you can count on from women, 
they're going to constantly they test, test you. you. He said it you. might be as infrequently as maybe three or five, three to five times a year, or it might be as frequently as three to five times a week. But he said women are going to continuously test you, again, for the same reason that uh, Alvin Mills strategy just described, is that, because see, that, that, a lot of women's attitude is this. You might have the strongest backbone in the world, say, in January and February, but you might have become a punk in May or June. Mm-hmm. Women gonna test you to see that. They're gonna be like, they gonna throw out tests to see, okay, are you still the strong motherfucker you were like six months ago, or did you become a punk on me? Mm-hmm. Hey, one me... of the reasons they want to challenge you, not only for their own sake, but see, this is how women think. Okay. Women they women believe their pussy is the golden oh Jesus Christ thing of, of manipulative <laughs> and pussy. guess what? They it's our fault. It's the thirsty mo- it's the thirsty ass niggas out there putting that value to that pussy. So they believe that they can use their pussy to persuade a man to do pretty much anything. So the the fact that they know that about themselves, guess what that means? That means they know that other women feel the same way. So that plays into that test because say if a woman wants to keep alpha male strategy, attention and companionship, if she thinks he's weak, then in her mind, she feels like if he meets a woman that's more attractive than her, sexy than her, then she, that woman's going to use her pussy to snatch alpha male strategies away from her. Mm-hmm. So she wants to know that, okay, is this a motherfucker that can be easily manipulated just by some good pussy? Or does go. it take more than just some good pussy to, to, to sway his behavior? And women want to be with a man who aren't me, easily swayed by anything, pussy or not. Let me add on to that. What, Alan, to said, what Alan said about the part that you might be strong in January and be weak in May, there's a reason for that. Guys can be strong when they don't care that much about a woman, but then as they start getting up, catching feelings and start getting a little bit more deeper, they start, they start letting the woman get away with shit. Mm-hmm. And so a woman yep. got to make sure that you still can lead her even if you, your feelings are starting to get deep. See, most guys yep. had that abundance mindset at the beginning when they don't, you know, really give a shit about a woman. But you check back in six months. Now they got, you know, they get catching a little feeling. They, you know, they hard into it. And now they start letting a woman get over with shit. And see, the thing is, women don't want to lead. They want a man that's going to lead them. And so another thing to add to that, too, is a guy's, most, most guys' confidence come from how they're doing in their life. So let's hypothetically say January, my business is booming. I'm doing real good. I'm doing right. six figures a year. Let's come back around to November. My business is failing. I'm struggling a little bit. I'm feeling a little vulnerable. I start letting the woman get away with shit because Ooh. I'm not doing as good in January. as, I, as I'm not doing as good as November as I was in January. So now I'm starting to feel a little vulnerable. So now I'm starting to get a little weak. So mm-hmm. guys got to know that they got to maintain their strength. It doesn't matter what your financial situation is or how your living situation is. Guys got to always remain strong. Even when you start catching feelings, you still got to remain strong and you still got to have that take it or leave it attitude, even though you might really care deeply about the woman now. Damn, listen, that's a good point. listen, that's alpha a male strategies point. is 100% correct. Listen, w- listen, when you can check a woman, when you can keep a woman in line, when even though you love her, even though you catch feelings for you, gentlemen, that's what separates the men from the boys. It's easy to tell a woman you can fucking walk if you don't give a shit about her. But if a man has that same mentality and knows it's going to it's going to fucking sting if she actually does walk, that's the difference between an alpha male and a fucking beta male. If we're going to put red pill terms on it. Another thing he made a point about is women want to know that you are the same throughout. Listen, you're not going to be chemically identical from one day to the next obviously you're going to be more effective mentally if your business is doing great in in january as opposed to november but women are looking for that rock okay they want to know that you're going to be the same and again if you here's the thing if you are affected by and not to say that that you're a weak if you're not mentally affected by your business doing well in some points and not doing well in another but women start to and this is unfair of women to do they say well damn this nigga had everything going on when he was making a bunch of money, but now he's not making a bunch of money. What is it? Your Listen, your inner frame, your inner purpose, your inner attitude has to come from you. Can't come from outside sources. And you know, you also know what men use as outside sources for their frame and dominance is women, right? So if they're doing good with women, everything is good with the world. If their money is right, everything is good with the world. Women want to know that they're with a man who are the same throughout. Yes, they know that you're human, but they need to know that you're going to have that ironclad, rock-solid strength no matter what the situation is and that's what breeds respect and long-term love 
And that, that's why I tell guys that um, one of the things I tell guys is that you should never allow your self-esteem to be based solely and specifically on one thing. Because that's when you're going to open the door for all kinds of insecurities. And that is when your confidence is going to fluctuate like you were just talking about, mm -hmm. Donovan and Alpha Male Strategy. For example, if a guy say 95% self-esteem is based on how much money he makes, guess what? If he goes through some financial troubles, oh. his, his self-esteem goes, Zhoo. if it's say solely and specifically built on how nice his physique is, mm -hmm. the minute he happens, I don't know, just starts eating junk food and he gains 50 pounds, his self-esteem will go, That's right. and, and, and so on and so on. And so I always tell guys, your self-esteem should be based on the collective sum of who you are. A there you go. There you go. Just about everything about you combined together, not one sole thing. Because if it's that one sole thing, like even like I've heard even some guys say, yeah, man, my self-esteem comes from the fact that I got a fucking 10 inch dick. Well, guess what? Guess what? If you go in that locker room and you if take you the shot, and if you got like a 13 inch dick, you're going to be like, God damn it. <laughs> they got a 13 inch dick on his shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, know. women want to know. Women want to know that your that your inner that that you are rooted in you. Don't listen, listen, man. I'm not gonna sit here and say that we're not human, dude. If I got a Lamborghini or a Ferrari parked outside, guess what? I'm gonna have a different swagger about myself mm -hmm. if I'm driving that than if I'm what? driving a fucking 2004 Toyota Camry. Exactly. There's no question about yeah, that. Exactly. But by the same token, you can't. And this is again, this isn't easy to do. But this is what you have to do as a man. Your self-esteem has to be rooted in what you are, not in what you have. And women respect that far more than, than the opposite. That's how you get a woman's respect and love. I got to call somebody out for being, um, not really being a troll, but he's kind of feeling sorry for himself in here. He's looking for a little bit of pity. I got Hassan in here that says, but it is much easier to get women when you're tall. I'm short Never had women get shot down all the time, so I stopped trying. Then he says, My height kills me with women. Women can't make a woman get to you no matter how hard you try. So it sounds to me like Hassan is on the road to MGTOW. Uh, Hassan is making, <laughs> Hassan is well, low level MGTOW. Hassan is making excuses. And I'll say all that, and I want to get you guys' responses because I'm very interested in what the both of you have to hear about, have to say about this. Men who endorse the idea, who endorse the ideology that, hey, money plus muscles equals girls. That is akin to women out here. That is an excuse for men to check themselves out of the game. I'm not big. I'm not strong. I'm not rich. So women aren't going to be attracted to me. So that gives them an excuse to be a loser. Women, on the other hand, like to say, you know what? Men only like perfect tens with big boobs and big butts. I'm only a six or a seven out of 10. So why even try? I'm going to be a slut. So a man who makes excuses to check out of the game is the equivalent of a female being a slut because she foolishly thinks that she can't she can't attain a man of value because she's not perfect. What say you guys? All right. Well, I will get back to that other point where you say a guy uh, loses his um, – and then I'll get on that – find his uh, finances. Okay. The, the main thing – I want to talk about how guys can maintain that because you're going to go through ebbs and flows in living life in your business. If yep. The main thing you need – if you're a guy that know that you can build anything again – so let's hypothetically say right now you two snatch my channel down and Patreon said, motherfucker, we're taking this shit well, away. Right. I know that, hey, I can rebuild. So, yeah, I'll be out three right. months, but I can rebuild. So a guy that don't got that confidence to know that he's a hustler, I know I can rebuild. Because in life, you're going to go through those little ebbs and flows where things just fucking happen. It just happened. I couldn't do security. I had lost my um, license two years ago. I couldn't do A guy did something. I lost my security and lost a big chunk of my income. Well, guess what? I knew that I could rebuild, so I didn't lose my confidence because I always know I can rebuild. So, guys, you simply have to know that when you go through these little ebbs and flows to maintain that confidence, just know, man, I did it once. I can do it a fucking again. That's right. You don't see Donovan on here crying that he lost his channel. He know I did it once. I can do it a fucking again. Damn so right. So that's the thing with that. No, that's a good point. That's a good point. Hey, hey, hey O'Shea, I got to go in about eight okay. minutes or so. Yeah, yeah, we'll wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. But uh, I wanted to quickly add on to that. Uh, well, as far as uh, the, the guy you're talking about, in it, 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 any guy, if, you, if you're a man listening right Use now. Use the voice, Alan. Use the voice. I'm sure they can't get women. <laughs> man, 
But see, y'all going to make me highlight a podcast host, but I ain't going to mention his name. No, oh, man, because he'll make, he'll make it responsible to y'all. Oh, oh, no, no don't do it, Alan. Don't do it. Oh, I know geez. I know who you're talking about. Don't do it. Don't I do it. No, see, because I had an ex roommate, because I get this from quite a few guys. I'm sure you guys get it, you know, on this hype thing, man. A lot of guys try to say, oh, man, you tall guys, man, you can pull women, man. If you, dude, I had an ex roommate when I lived in California, man. He was shorter than this podcast host, so I'm not going to mention. Because this podcast was so I'm not going to mention. Everybody know what I'm talking about. He yeah. says he's 5'7". <laughs> My ex roommate was 5'6". Okay. Man, he used to slay all kinds of pussy, man. You know why? Because he, he never brought attention to that. That never was a concern. Like, I never heard him walking around saying, damn, why am I so short? Damn, I'm so short. He just, man... He exuded a high degree of confidence and say, let's say there were women who weren't feeling because of his height. He just knew those women weren't for him. And for all of us, we got some women out there. I don't care if you six, eight, it's, you're still going to run into some women that just ain't going to be feeling you. It ain't like tall it's it's hard, nigga. With, with every single woman they want to hook up with. That's an so, excuse to me. That's, to me, that's, that's, that's a bad excuse. It is. It is. Give yourself an excuse for why you're unsuccessful. Guess what? That excuse is going to be valid because it's valid in your own mind. If you say, damn, my nose, man, I wish my nose was shorter. Or I wish my nose was narrow. I wish my hands were bigger. Whatever the fuck it might be. Mm-hmm. You, you just, you're just validating your own egotistical insecurities, which is... Girls will even hit guys. Well, look, I don't date short guys. You want, you know what you do when, when you hear that? I don't date short guys. <laughs> Not yet. And look her right in the eye when you say it. I can <laughs> promise you no short guy has ever said that before, right? I don't date bald guys. Well, you haven't met me yet, sweetheart. Sure. Have a seat, right? right? It's that boldness and that confidence. And this is the thing. Guys have to... This is the thing with guys in this rejection shit. Guys have to understand that everybody have a preference. I have a preference. I don't like skinny white women. All right? I don't want to talk to 100. <laughs> and, uh, I don't want to talk. Me neither. I don't want to talk to 115 pound white woman. All right? That's just my preference. I like thick ass, 160, 170 pound curvaceous, curvy, uh, curvy Curvace, black yeah. women. Mm-hmm. That's what I like. So under, guys have to understand that. Yes, I'm gonna go up to women and they ain't gonna like this fucking. Uh, beard and this fucking bald ass head. Right. I don't let it get me down. All right. If I grew my hair out, I have my fucking hairline to be way in the middle of my fucking head. So the point being is I don't worry about those women. All right. The thing is, guys, you got to understand that nobody's going to be attracted to everybody. I don't That's care right. who you is. All right. My best friend, he, when he see my women, he call them fat. When I see his women, I call him anorexic. We have different things. <laughs> <tastes. laughs> so that's the thing. Guys just don't seem to grasp that, that everybody has a preference. They go up to two guys, they go up to two women, get rejected, and all of a sudden they just say, you know what, women just don't like short men. There you go. And, and, and listen, here's the thing. You also have to think about it like this as guys, right? We're not attracted to all women, right? Listen, right. I like women with big tits. That doesn't mean I don't want to fuck women who don't have big tits, right? right? Exactly. Like it's it's, it's it's the same thing. So you're sure, oh, I like I like tall guys. Okay, but that doesn't mean she doesn't like short guys. The tall guy she's talking to you talking to might not have the swagger that you have. He might not have the self he might not have the self assurance that you have. He might not have the confidence or the game or the swag or the moxie that he has. If there's a, this is how you separate yourself from men. Okay, let me let me just do this. I know everybody has to. Uh, but, um, we, we got a question that. here from the for the panel from Rap Tracks Media. This is a good. Yeah, question. There's a, another question before him though. Okay, uh, there's a guy that wants to just make it quick, like thirty seconds. Like, uh, there's a, a question on um, online dating. Just how do you guys feel about it? And then we'll answer this one question for Rap Track Media. Um, and guys, unfortunately, because the the podcast was going out for people who super chatting, I can't read all the people. I'll try to do it at the end of the show. Uh, but thank you guys. Let's quickly, um, you know, we'll, we'll try to make these two questions, just one, and we'll close out the show. Uh, the guy says, fuck, what did this nigga say? I can go ahead and tell oh, you what my thoughts are. opinion on online dating, how should you incorporate it in your game? So just like really quick, a few statements about that. Um, yeah, real quick, online dating is what causes men like Hassan to say women don't like short men. Yeah. Online dating like Tinder 
women are making decisions strictly on the way you look and a 200 word paragraph about the fact that you like to take long walks in the woods and you like dogs, right? It is strictly, they have, listen, they have no other information. They can't, they, they, they can see you, but they can't read your body language. They can't see your eye contact. They can't see the way you carry yourself when you look at them, et cetera, et cetera. All they have is a picture to go on. So guess what? What they're going to do is they're going to swipe right for the best looking pictures. That's not a woman rejecting you. That's a woman rejecting your picture. So as far as I'm concerned, online dating, listen, a lot of guys use online dating successfully, but generally it's, and again, if you're not a good looking guy and you are successful in online dating, you're probably not fucking very good looking girls, which defeats the purpose in the first place. All right. All right. All right. Um, my uh, alpha male strategies. What do you what do you think about the online dating piece? And, 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 and to be fair, we'll do Donovan next next Sunday if you're available. I'll put a yeah, podcast up for Hall of Game for online yeah. dating, and we can we can weigh in and whoever wants to jump in, go ahead and jump in. I'll send, listen. I'll send a black man for alpha male strategies to kidnap him so he so he makes an appearance on the show. Yeah, yeah. He, well, we might not see him until 2020. <laughs> Get his security right, in 2020, dog. So <laughs> alpha and then, right. Alan Roger Curry, you know, he come. If, if it's enough people, he might send me a link and he like the top. <laughs> love it. But, but, I love but, it. But this is Alpha Mel Shadow just weighing on it. And then we go to Alan Roger Curry. Now, my thing is with uh, online date nails, I set up my profile. And what I do is I wait for the women that like my pictures and I go through there and I look to see who I see is attractive. So basically, I'm waiting for choosing signals online dating too. So yep. I set up the profile, but I don't initiate no contacts. Now, most women are not going to come on there and say, hey, how you doing? But they will like your picture. You know, women, that's their way of choosing, so to speak. Where well, they will like your, your picture or something like that. And what I do is I check the, my interest indicators over there on the uh, profile. And I'll go through it and see which one, uh, out of the women who like my picture, which one I like. And I'll send them a message and I'll start it that way. But do I surf through tons of online day? I, I, don't, I don't have time for that bullshit. I just simply wait for the women who... Uh, reach out to me first. I go through there. I look to see if they look good. If they look good, I'll send them a message and I'll start it right there. That that keeps the bullshit away. All right. You when go. you're going through there and you initiating content tech with you know a dozen women a day and all this and that other stuff, you're gonna get a lot of bullshit. You're gonna get a lot of women that are manipulative time wasters and all that bullshit. So that's how I use online dating guys. Is I just simply wait for the guy, the women that like my pictures and that the, those are the ones I reach out out of the ones that I'm attracted to. That's the only way I use it. Okay. You okay, know, that's a good tactic. Um, and it, we'll we'll do an episode completely on that next week. You know, whoever shows up, whatever. Um, I know you guys are busy. So let's go to uh, Alan Roger Curry and we'll ask the last question really quick and then I'll, I'll close it out because like, I'm hungry. Y'all, y'all can talk. Uh, yeah, I I think to me, both have the pros and cons. Online dating has its pros and cons, offline dating has its pros and cons. One of the pros that online dating has that say offline dating doesn't have is it's revolution, revolutionized dating in the sense that it opens you up to people out of your own area. Mm-hmm. You know, before the days of the internet, I basically hooked up only with women that were in, you know, at least for that initial meeting that were in my own city or happened to be traveling to my city or I traveled to their city. Whereas now you can go on a dating app and say, if you live in Chicago, you can connect with somebody who lives in Los Angeles. So that's the upside. Right. Yes, that's um, true. The, the, the downside is everything, you know, uh, both might have mentioned. I mean, there's a potential for catfishing. I'm going to tell you the most underrated oh, yeah. form, more than, more than, say, a match.com or plenty of fish. I've never done plenty of fish. Or, I've done Tinder uh, when I've been traveling. But Facebook, man, I ain't going to lie, man. I've gotten a lot of pussy from Facebook. Man. Oh, yes. I've, I've met a lot of women that I've fucked a lot of women that, that my first connection with them. Well, I, I, that's been a more success, even though that's not truly a dating app in the sense of like match.com or Tinder, but Facebook has been very good to me starting with roughly 2008, 2009. Yeah, man, I've, I fucked quite a few women that I've connected with on Facebook. Um, that is true. So, so yeah, I, I would just say in general, though, it has its upside and it has its downside. All right. Shout out to uh Masood. He said he's in uh he's in the same city as me. All right, bro. We got a hook up, man. I'm in the Lublin. Okay. And just real quick, um, just the last thing, guys. And I put the online dating because Alan, you brought out some points I wasn't even thinking about. Um, you know, we'll we'll put it out for next week. And th- th- this this question is brother asks, and um what what did the nigga ask? Question for the panel: oh. what is the difference between being confident and being cocky? To the point where it stems to delusion. Let's go with alpha male strategies first. Like the difference between being cocky and confident. Cocky, co- cocky is a turnoff. 
All right, that's you. That's that's you full of yourself. That's like arrogance. Confidence is you just know you assure yourself. But cocky is. Listen, I don't had friends that out that was cocky, and they weren't my friend the most. And when you cocky guys tend to brag about themselves, boast about themselves all the time, tell you, oh, you know, I I, I got this many, I got this much, I do this. I it's, it, it gets annoying. So if I'm a guy and I'm talking to a guy who's cocky, and that's a turn off to me. I can only imagine what it does to a female. O'Shea, right now, if you start talking about how many people you got signed up for the Negro Man of Spirit, they, nobody want to hear that shit, man. Congratulations okay. for fucking you, all right? The, nobody wants to hear another guy constantly brag all the time about what he got. That's that's what cocky is. They brag all the fuck. They want to throw it in your fucking face. Confidence is I'm assured of myself. I don't have to talk about what I got going on. I'm just confident about it, and I don't got to throw it in your fucking face. Right. Ooh. Especially, especially, I think that is is your biggest success um, is that you talk to people, not at them. Uh, I always use you as a great example of that. Like, especially dealing with our specific cohort of black people, black men, especially, they don't want to see you, you know, to hear you bragging about it. They're just like, you know, exactly what you're saying, especially with us. So that's, I think that's, that's you're very much different than a lot of black YouTubers in that respect, because you don't talk at people, you talk to them. Right, I agree with it. That, Although you have every reason to be shitting on everybody because you got more Patreons than shit. Some of us has been on here for a long time. I thought I was that nigga till you came, and I'm like, well, nigga, how the fuck did he do that? All right, but that's you know, I'm still mad. Uh, let's go to uh, Donovan real quick. Yeah, um, to me, <clears throat> cockiness is based on outside sources. It's based, it's based on, it's based on what you have. It, it people who are cocky, it's 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 it is as though they don't understand the degree of the power of their possessions. They, they, they overestimate their money, their possessions. So they, they assume that all of these possessions are going to be around forever, that they're somehow infallible. So they're cocky. And listen, sometimes they have reason to be. But confidence, on the other, other hand, that can't be shaken because, again, like we said earlier, it's rooted in you, not what you have. Conf and listen, cockiness and an ego – and ego, those are that's those are both overconfidence. There's no such listen, there's a difference between like we don't like cocky women, women who have big egos, because women can't handle rejection well. The way to burst a woman's ego is to is to reject her, and all of a sudden now she's not confident anymore, right? Mm -hmm. But confidence cannot be shaken. Okay. An ego, people who are arrogant, they get taken down a peg very, very easily. So basically, cockiness is verbal. Confidence is in your actions. The, 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 the old axiom, action speaks louder than words, was probably born out of someone talking to someone who is overconfident or cocky. All right. And um, so let me just do this. A, a brother donated five bucks. He's asking a question. At what financial level should a man be before approaching women or dating? I'm just going to sum that up. I'm pretty sure. This is easy. To the point where you're able to pay your bills on time every month. That's I it. think that's probably what it is like. I don't think that nobody's going to say um, yeah. mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Uh, There's right. no dollar figure. You yeah, can't no quantify what financial level because there, dude, there are men out here with a net worth, just like Alan said. Yeah, uh, Alan was uh, Alan was as broke as a joke. Yeah, fucking the most he did. It. I think it was like in the right, 80s, exactly. right? 88, 89. You said that year, Alan. You had the most sex in 89 oh, or 88. Uh, when I always highlight 1990. 1990. Was, I was. I know it was second, close to that. That was my second best year for getting pussy ever. And that year, I was pretty much. Damn near broke the whole year. I was unemployed most. I was living with my parents. I ain't had my own car. I was using my father's second car. There you go. Man, I was slamming women left and right. Now, refresh, I had to walk because somebody knocked on my hotel door. What's uh I actually got I literally got to go in like two minutes. What, what was the question about? No, the question is about the difference between being confident and cocky. Good. Well, you know, I ain't gonna lie. A lot of women call me cocky. Sure. It, listen, it's better to be over. Listen, at the end of the day, it's better to be cocky than to be completely unsure of yourself. Like if you had to pick one extreme or the other, be overconfident. Okay. But that's actually what I was going to say. I would say this. The best is to have what I would call the ideal level of confidence. OK. And that, that's probably going to range from guy to guy. But if you couldn't have, say, the quote unquote right amount and your only choice was having little too much or not enough, I always feel like it's better to have too much confidence to believe you can accomplish more than you're capable of than to believe you can you, you you can't you don't believe you can accomplish enough. And so in that sense, I'm cocky in the sense that I might give a woman an impression I can get her in bed 24 hours after I meet her when I might realistically only be able to get in bed within a week after I meet her. 
And in that sense, that's why I've had women say, you, you're cocky. You, you met me and you acted like you could just fuck me like within two hours after you met me. I'd be like, you're damn right I did. But then, mine is more of an entertaining cockiness. I, I'm never cocky in a way where I've had women say, you, golly, what's wrong with your ego? God, mine, women ever actually like more like, you, you a trip. You, you, you full of yourself, Allie. You think you all that. And, um, but yeah, guy, a guy should never wants to approach a woman and like again. I, I always exaggerate when I do these impersonations, but like, hey, yo, Cindy, you know, you know, I know I'm not the best looking guy in the world, but I would hope that you can find it in yourself oh, and Jesus go out Christ. with me. I mean, her pussy gonna drive. There's not even a term. Sahara Desert couldn't be the term for how I, I drive pussy gonna be. Listen to that type of lack of confidence. So. Uh, yeah, but on that note, fellas, it, this has been real. Of course, we had our, our little differences, philosophical differences and disagreements. Which is good, oh, which is very good. I think philosophical differences are very good because, no, listen, man, there's more than one way to skin a cat, man. No one way works every time. Let me add, exactly. let me add to your, let me add, yeah, to your add to that. let me add to that last situation where Alan said where he was getting the most pussy when he was flat broke. A lot of that be is because what, what happens is when guys know they're going through financial difficulties, some guys, I ain't going to say some guys going to shit, but some guys start to rely more on their charm because there they know go. they don't have the financial success. All right. So I've been in that situation too where I knew I had to rely more on my charm because I'm like, I'm making like 500 bucks a week in New York City. So, Woo. you know, you naturally go more to your fucking charm because you ain't got shit else to rely on. So, you know, yeah, that's why exactly. Want- you hit it on the head. Because that's how I was in most of my 20s. I would say most of my 20s, period, and even some of my early 30s. I was general. I wasn't like flat broke, like homeless. Well, I actually was homeless in LA, cupped up for about 24 hours. But Dude, we're all homeless in LA. It's way too expensive. <laughs> was, yeah, man, I was Damn. broke. So, yeah, Alpha Man Strange just hit it right on the head. Because, like, I knew deep down that basically the only way I was going to get laid was with, you know, my charm, my confidence, my charisma. Because I wasn't going to impress no woman with no roll of money in my pocket or the type of car I was driving or any fancy suit. It had to be all my natural shit. So real quick, listen, real quick before we go, that analogy, that is to me, that's akin to Batman versus Superman. Superman isn't as smart as Batman because he doesn't have to be. He's immortal. He's invincible. He can fly in and start tearing shit up with the bad guys. Batman can be snuffed out with one bullet. So he has to rely on his razor ship, his razor sharp wit, Um, you know, his his deductive problem solving his critical thinking. It's the same thing with game. And this is what I taught. This is this goes right into, hey, I'm short. I can't get laid. Yes, you can, because I can promise you, I can promise you short guys have probably have better game than good looking guys, right. good looking tall guys, good looking tall guys don't have to have that sharp game because right. they're good looking tall guys, right. short guys do they do they'll do they'll snatch that and ugly and niggas too. what's going on and ugly Hello. niggas too. <laughs> I can talk. To, I could talk the brakes off a bitch. Oh, right. In that case, yo, O'Shea's got tighter game than all of us here. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you, got the tightest game. I don't, on the don't want to challenge me to no, uh, no summit, motherfucker. You lose. Woo. I'm gonna right. for the south for real. I got a roll, fellas, man. All Much right. Hey, I just want to thank everybody, man, for coming on. You know what I'm saying? Alpha Male Strategies. I love him on accident. No homo. Donovan, I love you too. No homo. Alan Roger Curry, uh, you light skin it. I don't know how I feel about you sometimes because you be playing me, but it's all good, man. I thank all you guys, man. You guys are very successful. You know what I'm saying? Alpha Male Strategy took the game to another level. You know what I mean? I got to really, you know, give you props. You, you didn't Appreciate kick it to bro. another level, brand. You know, I tried to put, you know what's fucked up? I, I you, you fucked up a lot of shit for me. Um, I will say that I told Donovan, you know, because when I had brought, cause I'm not a dating coach or whatever, I talk a little bit about the game, but right. I didn't know, like, I mean, y- y'all kind of went into more detail than I did. So when I went and got Donovan and went and got Alan and Rom, I just knew, I said, man, this shit right here, I got the motherfucker. We got the shit locked down. Like, <laughs> it, you know, all I got to do is get is, is get the ball rolling on this shit. And dog, you came and undertook the game. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> listen, Alpha Male Strategies has helped me. Niggas, 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 listen, niggas was strategy. like, "What the fuck?" We like the Pistons after we after the, the Bulls finally after won. Yeah, like, right. We like, "What's going on, man?" 
Well, the thing is, is I'm successful now because people people subscribe to me thinking I'm alpha male strategies, right? They're like, oh, shit. Oh, there he is right there. He changed his name to Donovan Sharp, but I'm sure that's him. (laughs) You took the game to another level, man, because we thought we had this shit on lock. We had the site. We had the e-books. We had the podcast. Yeah, but one thing that's clear, like all jokes aside, you know your shit. Like I've I've said that that many, many times before. There are a lot of... Yeah, there are a lot of newcomers that come on and they they try all this stuff. Like I've watched you for a while. You know what you're right. talking about. I think I think Thank that's you, bro. that's the reason for your success because you know your shit. That's what it comes. Appreciate down. that, bro. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. You good too, at Donovan. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, damn, man. I thought I had this shit. I'm like, man, I I got this shit locked. <laughs> no, man, this nigga took the shit. I'm kind of glad the nigga on Patreon, man. So now Salty we can see Look at him. He used to hey, change like, our hey. show times, dog. I was like, look, dog, we're going to do the show right now. No, Alpha Male Strategies Live. He got 1,300 motherfuckers watching. <laughs> he ain't going to do that show right now, nigga. Like, like, when's he going to do it? When he get off. <laughs> when that fuck the whole fuck he's holding sleep go off, that's when we going to do it. <laughs> In fact, one of me and Steve's best show was when we waited for him to end. <laughs> Nigga, we did a show. That shit was cracking, but I said, we can't do it right now, though. We go right now. We about to get killed. We need to come back later, nigga. So I wanted to shout out to you, man, because you changed Appreciate the game, button, man. Appreciate it, man. I, I want to know one thing, man. Everybody want to know, man. Like, when you going to come back? I mean, we know you got to load the, uh, the athletic channel and shit, but yeah. when are you going to ever, you know, are you going to ever do, you know, another video on your main page? Or are you going to just I'm, come and do the episodes? Like, I'll drop in, like, and do my live streams every now and then. I might do one today. All right. Okay. Uh-oh. I okay. Yeah, I'm not. Today, listen, so. I'm not doing anything else today. I've, uh, I'm going to watch the Indy 500, and then I'm going to watch the Coca Cola 600. Yeah, so I, I'm, hey, I'm, 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 I'm going to check guy. in because uh, you got the, the you got the super chat on there now. I see, so I'm going to be in there tricking on the super chat. You know how I do. <laughs> uh, so in Donovan, man, just quick, quick, man, like everybody know, like you know, because you ain't on YouTube, but also both everybody that was on here today, Alan Roger Curry don't post videos really anymore. He he doesn't this month. Um, Alpha Male Strategy, you might do one live stream a month and Donovan in only. So this was like a unique stream because right. you got Charlie Post. Well, yeah, I think YouTube. I think YouTube. Um, YouTube did me a favor because they've made they've made my content much more scarce. When people Google Donovan Sharp, you can't find me on YouTube. So people now know they can only come to DonovanSharp.com. AMS is, you know, did the smart thing and bowed out before he got kicked out. So right. now when he does a live stream, he there there's like what you've done is you've increased the value of your live streams, you know. Right. And this is again, it's the same with women. The more the more you're available to women, the less they value you. Well, right. you know, it's, it's the same thing. So yeah, that's how it works. Well, I ain't got the talent that you niggas. My talent is a different type of talent. So I gotta keep on here working and trying to keep the shit popping. So Unfortunately, I wish I was at the level where I could, you know what I mean, do what y'all do. But um, you know, I gotta, I gotta be that nigga that holds the glue, man. So I really thank you guys. I'm a big fan. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. And and hopefully, I mean, I don't know when I can get you guys back. I mean, I'm more likely to get Donovan back because you guys know Donovan is my uh, go-to guy for NegroManager.com. If I need an article, um, if I need two or three articles in a week, if I need anything in a week, I know I can go to Donovan. You know, Rom Allen. They wishy washy on a nigga, but yeah, yeah, AMS. We got to do a show sometime. I think you and I are. I think you and I are definitely like minded enough. We got to wake up some pretty good. We got some pretty uh, good. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 Curry on the ropes, dog. He ready to fight, nigga. Yeah. yeah, you know it is what it is. That that's what happens, man. Listen, philosophical differences in game. I think that's to. healthy. Yeah, right. it's gonna happen, man. To. We're all on the same team at the end of the day, right? right. Listen, some people exactly. bat right handed, some people bat left handed. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, you guys are good, man. So again, um, you know, Donovan is writing on the Negro Menace for I'm actually writing tomorrow for Alan Roger Curry on Monday. For those of you who don't know, I actually started columning back again. Um, you know, Donovan, don't get jet, don't get jealous, but I am a pretty good writer, you know. I'm saying I'm putting them out and shit, you know what I mean? So I'm a school player, I can write and talk. What you say? Yeah, yeah. Actually, man, we all can we all are I mean, I'll start off as a blogger a few years ago. So I'm 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 writing tomorrow's article uh for Alan Roger Curry in his place. Uh, so I've been working on that all day and uh, doing this podcast. And so I guess anything you guys want to say, man, um, just just in general, you know, um, yeah, I'll, I'll start just real off quick. Since you guys are yep. like the dating coach guys of black YouTube, like, do you guys think that this, you know, like the black male dating coach scene is is like an underserved market or, you know. I'll start with yeah, you. I think. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Dog. I- I think I don't think it's an underserved market. And the reason I say this is because man for man, I mean, there's listen, there are a lot of thirsty ass niggas out there, but man for man, black men, we have more game than white men. And I, at the end of the day, th- this is probably why black women are a little bit tougher to game because you have like you have you have to have that game. 
But yeah, I guess it is an underserved market because there are a lot of black men out there who don't really they don't have the they don't have the right tools. We've all been we've all been given faulty tools. Then we get out there in the real world and we're taught to cherish a woman and do this and do that and be a nice guy, and then we get shit on. And this is what's bad about the black community, man, is that we're not trying to help each other. And 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 because like white guys, they love helping each other. Hey, you want to know how to fuck a bunch of white girls? Come to our channel, right? And they flock to them. But there there are not there are not enough black men doing what we do. So yeah, to and the short answer to your question is yes. This is a this is an extremely underserved market for sure. All right, all right. Um, and and alpha man, like you you know you really kind of blew up in Negro too, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like really really quick. So does that point? Do you think it's because we did have an underserved market and you know brothers was kind of just really waiting for um you know kind of a relatable voice to kind of you know help people out with the problems well i think that i blew up quick you know with, without other circumstances but the main thing I, I think i blew up with was i served you know the guys like we're gonna fight back you know women been out here with all this fuckery and i came onto the set i'm like you know what we we, we, ain't, we ain't playing by the rules no more you know no. these bitches <laughs> we ain't playing by the rules. And when I came out with a direct and let guys know, listen, the shit I'm telling you, if you want to, you're looking for a good Christian guy to follow and, not, and do everything the right way, I might not be the guy for you. That we, with my channel, I, I made it clear from the get-go, it was strictly trying to show guys how to get laid, manipulation, call it whatever you want to, indirect approach. I, I, what I was saying was, women been out here doing this fuckery bullshit, flaking this, doing this, all this fuckery. When I came onto the scene, if you look at my videos, I let guys right off the back know that we ain't playing by the rules no more. We taking the, we taking the gloves off, and mm -hmm. I let guys know that. This social media age, this feminism age, these women have lost their goddamn mind. I'm trying yep. to keep it on page. I'm trying to keep it on YouTube. I ain't yeah, trying to keep it on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping it on YouTube, but I let the guys know that hey, we we finna get we finna get our hands dirty. And we finna fuck these, right. you know, to sleep. And I let it be known. And I think guys was ready for a voice like that. Tyler trying to do everything the right way. You know, the guys set up a date on Saturday night. They had one date set up on Saturday night. A girl had three days set up on Saturday night. Right. She go with whichever one she feel like the best that night. And the other two guys, they just short that night. And don't give a damn. And the guys got Tyler dating coaches telling them, well, this is the right way. You do the right thing. And you took Guys are tired of that shit. Guys are tired of that shit. And this, this. This, I get to guarantee you, how many guys got flaked on last night? Guys, got, got, guys tired of hearing that bullshit. Guys do everything the right way. They try to do everything the up and hand, and then women doing everything the total opposite. So when I came on, I think guys like, this is the voice we need. I'm tired of that bullshit. All's fair in love and war, man. That's what it right. comes down to. Like, listen, women have been deceptive for eons. And, right. you know, men, thanks to the internet, listen, men have the, uh, listen, women are always going to be two or three steps ahead. Like, we know this because they're women and they right. have far more opportunities than we do. But for men, but but for men who want to level the playing field and flip the script and change the game, yeah, this is the approach you need. And right. listen, there is nothing moral about what we preach here. Like, right. honestly, you can throw your Bible out the door. Throw it. Right. Listen, if you want to be able to sleep at night after, if you want to be able to sleep at night after this approach, <laughs> this isn't for you, right? Right. If, right. If, if you don't mind losing a few hours of sleep, right, then this this is the approach that you need to take. Throw right. all that happy, dappy, goody, right. two shoe shit out the door because that's not working. Never has, right. and it probably never will. Not in my lifetime. Right. All right, man. Yeah. So, guys, look, man. Good. Yeah, it's a, it is a good chemistry uh, between you know Donovan and Alpha Male Strategies. And Alpha Male Strategies, man. You know, you just <laughs> he just came in and punked the chat. Uh, give me the link. He, him and Anthony Brian Logan. You ever see Anthony Brian Logan on here? No. Okay, he do the same <laughs> shit. You know, <laughs> give me the link. Let me shout that, out to uh, some other my big YouTuber friends, man. Like, I'm not a big big YouTuber. Like, niggas know who I am, but I ain't like huge. So, shout out to Blackie Speaks. He was just in here, huge YouTube channel. Um, my boy RB the Breakthrough, killing it right now uh, with the NBA Sports Channel. I, mean, I talk to him like almost every day. So you guys got a lot of fans, um, you know, that are much bigger than you guys than all of us. You know what I'm saying? But you know, Alpha Male is you know bigger than me. But I want to thank all the other big YouTubers, man. They they look forward to hearing um, Donovan Sharp, Alpha Male Strategies, Alan Roger Curry because we're a very small market on Black YouTube. That talk about this stuff, you know, me, you, Lucario, Alan Roger Curry, Alpha Male Strategies. But um, it's good to get all you guys on the uh, on the panel. I never thought I would be able to get all of you guys on the panel at once. Yeah, dude, you hit me five minutes before we went. Hey, you want to do a show? I'm like, yeah, all right. I'm not doing anything till eleven, and here we are. I'm four hours late for my console. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So listen, man. Uh, you know, thanks for coming on Alpha Male Strategies. I'll definitely be in your uh, chat tonight, man. Donovan, right. you know, you are the, the Negro Manosphere's MVP. Uh, you know, wouldn't with the site wouldn't be. 
where it is today with, without you for sure. You've done a lot of work, man. Um, you know, writing a lot of ebooks. Uh, you've written over, I think, almost as many articles. Uh, you're at 79 right now. So you've written how many with Return of Kings? In um, not the, uh, a little of just actually right about the same amount 80, 82, something like okay, that. Okay, you've so written I'm, that yeah. amount in how many years? Almost not even no, two years. Five, almost five. No, in, uh, yeah, on Negro Manosphere. Yeah, two years less than that. But on yeah. you know, Return of Kings, it's been about five years. Yeah. Five years. So you've already done as much work, or if not more, with Negro Manosphere than you've done. Oh, with, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. E, all day, all so day. it's good to see you going to 21 convention. Um, yeah. you know, and hopefully, you know what I'm saying? We're going to do a Negro Manosphere convention. We'll get Alpha Male Strategies, Donovan, Rom. Um, it'll be good, man. I just want to say I'm a big fan of all you guys. Uh, and keep up the good work. Like I said, you could you with Alphabet Strategies, either you was gonna become a hater or you was just gonna get behind the team, man. I, <laughs> you can't beat the motherfucker, so you might as well join the nigga because he just you, you got no choice. So shout out to you, man. You just is such a talented YouTuber, bro. And you do that shit without no mics or no look at this motherfucker got a goddamn cell phone. This nigga is he really keeping it real, like. You know, we you think of using OBS. This motherfucker got the Obama phone and shit. <laughs> I can barely hear this nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh shit. You barely hear this motherfucker. Oh, the message, Obama baby. Phone. The message. Oh, the message yeah, goes. you know. Message. He don't even hold the phone sideways. Nigga, he just doing the old school. You know what I mean? Like, and he still be getting like a 1,500 niggas watching him at the same time. So shout out to you, bro. You, you, you really that nigga for that. So. Guys, see y'all tonight over at his channel. We might be do a another stream. I don't know, nigga, but uh, big announcement. Ain't gonna tell you. But any, anything else you guys want to say? No, uh, AMS. I'm definitely gonna hit you, man. All right, bro. Go get the plaque, dog. Go get the plaque. I'm gonna go get it, bro. I'm gonna go get it. Donovan, show him your plaque real quick. I think he might get some cheap <laughs> shit. Oh, right here. There it is, right there. You see that? All right. I'm going to get it, baby. I'm going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't sending the shit back already. You know what I mean? I paid no, like fifty dollars for that shit. All right, I got you, baby. No, nah, man, you lying. And you nigga said the last time, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. You get it? Yeah. No, no. Hey, dog, he's been there for three weeks. You don't get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get it. No. Tuesday, bro. Tuesday. Okay, okay. Hopefully it's there. All right, man. Peace out, y'all. Thanks so much All for coming up. All right, guys. Take care.